And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have two of my good brothers here in the temple. First, making his debut, he is the self-proclaimed for he is the self-proclaimed fourth edition Grognard, which there is no such thing. Good brother Petal, and we have the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadare Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence, good brother Xanatrix. This is another instance of a monastery monastery special. Don't worry, we'll be back to our normally scheduled shit posting this Sunday, and oh, what a day that'll be. Um, <laughs> I, uh, by the end of this month, I and I will endeavor to piss off to piss off everyone's main in both World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy. It will ha it will happen. I guarantee you this. But. For this one, this particular special, I wanted to return to Tear Maker and do and because of how much fun we had with the minus five stars episode. But I wanted to do something a little different. So the approach that uh, that I ha that I have in mind for this is to is to, is taking classes, and I will admit one bit of inspiration for this was watching Asmogold. Go through a tier maker on the um, on the specs in World of Warcraft. Now, and I ended up getting an idea of doing it with D and D classes, but everybody and their mothers has done has done this kind of thing with D and D fifth edition classes, or th or third edition, or Pathfinder, or God help you AD and D if you want to go through that many books. So I decided to cover. I decided to do this on the edition that I'm supposed to not like. Except, except for one problem, I only do I only do what I'm told when when the check's clear. <laughs> so th on this episode of Geek Watch Special, we have D and D Fourth Edition classes ranked. Now, unlike last time, I did not create a custom tier entry for e for each tier level because I didn't see the point. And two, we will. There, there's several reasons why I wanted to tackle fourth edition in this regard. First off, I still like the I still like the system, even though so, even though some of the things that it's done have been have been succeeded through game through games like Thirteenth Age or um, Unchained Heroes. However, the other re the other reason was there's a lot there's a fair amount of very interesting classes and class builds. Throughout fourth edition, and I wanted to also slam this idea of fifth edition being the greatest hits of the editions by showing some of the things that fourth edition did that it tried that fifth edition tried to carry over but kind of missed the point. Now we will be now the um, truth be told, setting up this this particular um, chart was not as easy as I would have liked. Because while some classes have their own have their established class symbols and there's plenty of artists who do variations thereof, the I'd say I'd say those entries only cover about a third of the total classes in all three players' handbooks for fourth edition. So I had to get a little bit creative. And I borrowed symbols from World of Warcraft, Emberwind, and Diablo, specifically Diablo 3, and um, Ar Archeon Chronicles. Um, two, of which, uh, two of which are games that I've talked about in the past, and one of which I'm probably going to be talking about in the future. Now that being said... Oh, and hey, hey there, Joel! <laughs> Joel! Good brother Joel! He made it! Hello! I did! Just got here. Hello! Alright, talking about 4th edition, I am in. I was just I was just giving the giving a bit of the preamble. One of the main there are there are a few reasons why we do why I why I went with fourth edition. One, we do th this is the temple. We do things differently here. Two, I'm only going I'm only going to start hating on fourth edition when the check's clear. And so far each of, each time I'm told to do that, the check bounces. 
So, to quote one of my favorite movies, fuck you, pay me. <laughs> or, to, or to quote one of my favorite comic book memes, I know you're here, Dracula, you big, you big fucking nerd. Where's my goddamn money? <laughs> you're fucking crazy, Moon Knight. Wait, Dracula isn't an Avenger? That lying fuck. <laughs> hey, you got ketamine? But, with, but, in, ad in, in addition to that, as I mentioned before, there's some interesting classes and some interesting um, class designs. But another, but I also want to bring up um, a bit of a narrative that people have had about 5th edition that I find to be complete bullshit. That it, it, that it is a uniting of the editions. Uh, I mean, there are some you know, principles of force that came into my, <clears throat> my argument has been there are elements from previous editions present, but they're present in a, but they're present in a way that, that they don't coalesce together. Or in, or in some cases, bringing in elements bringing in elements without understanding the context of why they why they were designed a certain way in the first place. Um, yeah, there, there's an unfortunate amount of that in fifth. It, it's both too light and too heavy at the same time in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure in doing this, um, I'll add this to the list of reasons why Wizards of the Coast will ne will ne will never answer my calls. Not that I call them it. Not that I've called them it in a while, except except to except to laugh about Seattle weather, or whenever the Seahawks lose, or that or that or that one time I laughed at them because they couldn't get the paperwork right for one of their artists, and they ended up getting st they ended up getting stuck getting um getting getting stuck getting stuck at the airport, or not the not oh, the geez. airport they they what for they um. They screwed. They screwed up the paperwork on one of their artist's passports, and and they and they got stuck in customs, and then had to and then had to fly back. Oh, jeez. Let this be a lesson, folks. Get your paperwork in order before flying across borders. Yeah. It's, it's bad. It's bad enough having to. It's bad enough having to go through one. Having to go through one. Having to go through one flight. At least get something to show for it, like a lousy T-shirt. <laughs> I was deported by customs, and all I got was this lousy T-shirt. <laughs> um, but es especially since, especially since, um, well, for me personally, I can't, I can't stand, I can't stand flying, no matter what airline I'm on, because um, tall guy problems. This yeah. is why you. This is why you buy the upgrade to at least business class, monk. I fly standby. Sometimes I get lucky, sometimes I don't. Uh, Monk, you've got it all wrong. You need to uh, ace in bioengineering and just graft wings onto yourself. Petals, have you ever read the story of Icarus? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I am intimately familiar with that story. Then you know what. Then you know why that's a terrible idea. It's also a terrible idea if you've read any James Patterson books because you know they quickly devolve into garbage. I don't read James Patterson. I ha I don't hate money enough for that. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that one thing that I want to so before before we before we um, dive right into the festivities, let me switch this over so everyone, so everyone will be able to see the. Um, Thing once it actually loads. There we go. Um, hang on, Joel. I got. I got to adjust your volume a little bit. Ah, it could be where you mean. Do we do like a scales over here while you're doing it, like a oh kind of thing? No. Not no scales and no barbershop quartet. Cool. Those Wait are the only two notes I can hit. So. Like we don't. There. We have enough for a barbershop quartet. Problem is, I think the only one here interested in singing right now is me. Well, I'd be interested in being in a barbershop quartet. Denied. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go create... Dreams goodbye, my Coney Island baby. <laughs> hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime girl. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm go I'm going to throw things at you if I if I ever see you at a convention. You're going to throw things people if you see them at conventions anyway, monk. That's not a threat. <laughs> and to me it's just an invitation for a good time. Uh, no, you do not. You do not want monk throwing things at you at a convention. That's not going to be a good time for you. No. <laughs> he might just choose to throw me at you. That. That. And try or, and kill two birds with one stone. That or um. That or cha that or throw throw things and channel this and channel the spirit of Randy Johnson while doing so. <laughs> I.e. I.e. the man who made the man who um whose baseball got in a got in a fight with a pigeon, and the pigeon lost. Because it exploded. <laughs> I remember that. Good times. Good times. PETA got pissed off, but then again, it's PETA, so fuck him. Who, do, who cares about PETA? PETA doesn't even save the animals they say they save. But we saved them in the way yeah, that too, God yeah, saved besides, people they on Earth with the flood. Yeah, they're too busy, uh, you know, releasing uh, crabs into fresh water and killing but when it comes to now, there's a few um, there's a few factors that we're going to be judging when it comes to the classes, and I w I want to make clear we're going with we're going with all of the classes from core, and all the cl as well a few class a few um setting specific classes, in fact two of them, and the classes from essentials. No oh boy, I'll have some things to say about essentials. <laughs> we all do. Now, the f there are several factors that we're going to be judging these on. One of the first one is the uh, the um cl how well the class's design fulfills the fantasy that it's built around. Um, and the other the other thing is whether or not it gets, for lack of a better term, outclassed by uh, by other classes. And I was tempted to put these in put these in order of power or role, but I decided, you know what, fuck it, I'll just go in, I'll just go in alphabetical for the base and alphabetical for the essentials. That's probably the best way to do it. I like those criteria, by the way. I think those are pretty insightful. Yeah, because yeah, because you know, just like a base regular old tier list based on power gaming just gets boring after the five millionth time. I think people and, and people who have any experience with fourth ed, they already know. They know how they stack up against one another. They know what the most optimal classes are. It's not a mystery. Mm -hmm. Not breaking any new ground. There. Yeah, everybody was halfway like, knowledgeable about four knows the assassin's awful. Yeah. So really cool in name. We so to get started, we have the ardent. The ardent is what is a is a psionic controller. Which um, no, it was a leader. Oh, no, psion yeah, psionic leader. Um, which me, which means it's an opportunity to talk about how psionics work, because mm. throughout throughout the Indies history, psionics has been one of those things that that has been experimented with getting introduced, but they were never able to nail down properly. Um, and even 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 Ernie had had brought that up with me that they tr that they kept trying, but it didn't work. Um. And What's... part of the problem is that they always tried to make it, like, super unique from, like, the other sources of power you can get. And that's always created massive imbalances. Um, having it be unique from the others is, n is not necessarily a problem. Especially since some, it's I remember some... Just that the designers are never that skilled enough to make it work. The, the, pro the, problem, the problem, oddly enough, was that, um, in a, lot, in a lot of cases, they did their job a little... They either did their job a little too well, or they did their job not well enough because it was it was essentially a hyper focused type of um, type of casting. Now, the the way that the way that the way that um, fourth edition handles psionics is something that I find interesting. The, so, most classes have the AEDU formula. At wills, encounters, dailies, and utilities. Psionic classes, for the most part, don't. There is one exception, but we'll get to that later. 
Instead, they get more at-wills than anybody else. Their encounter powers is their psionic points that they can use to modify their some of their at-wills. So, in doing this, the psionics actually do have a niche of being of being the most um, freeform in terms of their tactics. Oh, we should probably put a little thumb in there and that the uh, no encounters thing does not imply, uh, apply to utility powers. I, fi well, I figured that I figured that was obvious. That's what that's why I brought it up the way the way I did. Um, but you know, some of the viewers might not be aware of that. Yeah, um, flavor-wise, psionics are psionics are uh, ardents are kind of weird because the way the way that they're described, they're the kind of person who in in um wa in walking past a funeral might burst out crying, yeah. or or just just being just being this emotional sponge based on based on the emotions going around them. Um, yeah, the ardents like. They wanted to do like some sort of telepath, but they didn't want the really uh, sometimes creepy flavor of guy who mind fucks you. Yeah, they 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 do they they do get they do get some um, good healing at at Par at Paragon t at Paragon tier, mostly because in their early in their early runs, a lot of their healing is based around temporary hit points. Um. They're all. They're also very, but they are very. They're very good at um da at da at daily dropping. Um. The big pro The big problem with them is that they're compared to compared to other leaders. They're not very good at defense, which is why the common tactic for Ardens is um is shield is shield and poker. So, and actually, that uh, that highlights something that's kind of interesting about the fourth edition, in that there is more modularity than it's given credit for. I think a lot of people see like the huge inflexible stat blocks every level, and they think like, "Oh, I can't. I'm not gonna be able to modify this like I could in third. But there's actually a lot of interesting tactical options like that that really, and there aren't many, but the ones that are there actually really impact the way you play a character and what's good to do and not. So, yeah, like your power selection can. Like literally shift your entire role uh, if you pick correctly. And I've seen I've seen some say, "Oh, you're oh, I'm only pick only picking between four. But a lot of people have very selective memory about the fact that while there were a lot of options in say third, there were a lot of options that were traps. In fact, I jokingly said that there's that there are more trap there are more traps in here than a than a whorehouse in Thailand. Yep. More more traps in here than the uh, Ladybird Choir in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. But Ardents, for me personally, I would put them at a B. They can they can do really really well if you use them properly, but there are but there are a few traps that they that they can fall that they can fall into, and um, it's and it's real. There's too many moving parts to put them any higher. Now, I think Ardens, from a gameplay perspective, are okay, but uh, for me, it was always their just like their concept where they just fell off for me. Conceptually, they're kind of dumb. I will, um, I will grant, I will grant, um, I will grant Psionics in fourth, the fourth edition one one bit of credit. Actually, actually, coming up with an in-universe explanation for psy for why psychic powers exist. Basic, basically, it basically it's a defense mechanism due to due to due to the um, appearance of of mind flares and il and ilthids and the like. You know, ardents are kind of like a Tumblr user, and they have absolutely no emotional control whatsoever. No, it's. I'd say they're more. I'd say they're more akin to, to the jet to somebody who spent way too much time doing the jet, doing the Jedi mind trick. Because they're all about ma manipulating emotions. These are not the psychics you're looking for. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. I I don't know of a lot of like in 
and maybe this is a weakness of my imagination, but like I can think of a ranger, like Aragorn springs to mind. I can think of a fighter or a barbarian, especially. You can think of like you know, Fat Bird and the Grey Mauser, Conan. You can think of a wizard really quickly, but like psychic that feels really strongly about other people's feelings. I don't have a character that pops out at me that's like some archetypical guy. I'm like, oh, that guy. I love that dude. Like, I'm sure there are I mean, characters, but I think I the closest that... I can think of is like Jean Grey. Yeah, even, I, I wouldn't even call her high some... on my list of psychics. To yeah, it's it's either. still flawed. Like, also, there's actually a bit like deeper explanation for where psionics come from in 4e, but uh, I won't get into that. I know. gave I gave the cliff notes. Um, <laughs> yeah. But next we have Artivisers, which are an arcane leader. Um, I really they, like Artivisers. They for, they first showed they first showed up in Dragon Magazine, um, specifically in Dragon number three sixty five, um, and would and would later for and would later show up proper in the Player's Guide to Eberron. Now, Artivisers. I I'd say I'd say the I'd say the thing that the thing that they're going to be really good at the thing that they're going to be the absolute best at is letting people use their magic item powers more often as well as well as doing more things with their magic items that's what arcane empowerment basically is um and arcane rejuvenation just let just lets them he, just lets them heal allies whenever they use the daily power of a magic item whereas um Healing infusion is basically the, basically their leader um, deal, where they can either they can either um, heal based on healing surge, or um, or or grant a or grant AC buffs. But nobody uses resistive formula. <laughs> um, well, you can actually also expand uh, the uh, AC bonus for like temper hit points. Yeah, I'm just I'm just saying most of the time that people would run artificers, they would usually go with e with either. Um, with with either curative admixture or so, or sometimes um, shielding elixir. I like the point out yeah, that's like, that's like a lot of opinions I see online agree. What that does this thing because like you're you're kind of describing a version of a cleric there too, like the the, tra the classical support, but like or that kind of does the impossible and then it makes that a very proactive and fun character to use. There's a lot of teamwork emphasized in the mechanics of combat in 4th edition, and like, I think, honestly, it gets undersold for how cool it may what were effectively support characters like that. Yeah, um, something that, something that I've noticed in my forays with design, and I'm pretty sure something that you had noticed, is that a lot of archetypes that are supposed to be based on support tend to, tend to, tend to be, um, treated as the spare prick in the wedding because they're not, act because... They're more because they end up spending more time on maintaining things rather than being actively involved. Yeah, and, and these characters they are actively involved. They have their own shtick. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure when we get to the um, the tactician style classes, we're going to have a lot more to say about those too because those are hugely popular. Oh yeah, Mother but for, for me personally, I'm putting <laughs> Artificer as an A. Um. It is. St it is st the only. Th I'd say the the main thing that's going to keep it from an S is the fact that if you're if you're not if you're not re if your party isn't getting magic items all that much, they're not going to be as effective. Or yeah, artificers were definitely kind of built around being an Eberron where magic items are abundant. Mm -hmm. I, I know some like you can just walk around in a cafe in Eberron and trip over a random magic item. Like, well, you can trip over magic in D in D and D per in D and D period, despite the fact that it's supposed to be low magic, according to the o according to the OSR hounds. <laughs> yeah, like in Eberron, you like you go to a cafe, it's like, oh hey, your stirring stick is also a plus one magic weapon. I remember, uh, I very fondly remember playing Dark Sun in Fourth Edition, and like that's even there, I was surprised at how frequently we got weapons that were. Like magical. I mean, it's it's dark sun. Even getting metals hard to do. <laughs> well, I'd say I'd I'd say when it comes, mind to... you, it was still it was still hard. It was just more than I thought. Yeah. Um. 
I think I think so, I think some I think some people have this idea of um of the way to increase difficulty is to starve players of resources. That is certainly one way to do it, but I don't think it should be the only way to do it. I mean, I mean I've, I've, you're talking to a guy that I'm fully fine with giving players the equivalent of tactical nuclear weapons in my game I'm designing and kickstarted. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, there are other ways to challenge players. You don't you don't have to deprive them of resources. As a matter of fact, I think it's impossible to deprive characters in certain games. Like, and, and actually, Fourth Ed has that in common with like Exalted, where the the deadliest thing is a powerful martial artist in their bare hands. Mm -hmm. And like, this game has a lot of that too. Where even if you disarm characters, they have so many options and so many abilities, and their teamwork is still such great synergy. It's really hard for that to be an actually viable way to challenge them. Which um, is kind is kind of funny because I I see a complaint about Fifth Ed about how after, once you get into the teens, you're you're not you're not challenged anymore. You feel like a, you end up feeling like a superhero. It's a really high power scale. Uh, power scale. The funny thing. The funny thing is, there's nothing. I don't think there's anything wrong with feeling like a with feeling like a superhero, but it all much in the same way that feeling like a oh, feeling like a badass in an action game. There's nothing wrong with that. It's in the it's in the context of how like if you're just, if you're just mo if you're just mowing. If you're just mowing a bunch of people, a bunch of people down with no, with nothing to challenge you, that's that's gonna get boring quick. And I know somebody's gonna say, "Well, what? Well, you 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 love the you love the, the Dynasty Warriors games, isn't that the same thing?" No, it's not. Especially since especially since the there is still a ga there is still a game involving um involving crowd control and getting around the map when it comes to Dynasty Warriors, so it doesn't qualify for that kind of thing. I know a lot of people think that all you need to do is just mash X X Y, but those kind of people obviously were playing on easy or um, <laughs> possibly journalist mode. I don't know. I I still remember fighting. Yeah, I remember Blue Blue with like cow cows armies and my ass it was kicked. Really well, that's that was your first problem. You should not pursue Lu Bu. No, no, Man, no, Mike. I, it's you do not pursue Lu Bu. That's that's how I do role playing. That's how I do any video games, though. I'll find the stupidest option, like the hardest, most impossible option, and be like, "That, that's what I want to do. That's how I choose to play this." But I've so. mentioned I've mentioned plenty of times that I am very f that I'm very mm -hmm. fond of the Plutonia experiment. In fact, it's my favorite episode of Doom Two. And um, even if you're and that certainly doesn't deprive you of resources. It just forces you to look at to look at the resources differently because of how enemy placement works. Oh. And the and the fact that the game the, the the game knows just how to use the just knows just how to use Doom 2's rogues gallery to find a way to fuck you over. And and loves doing the whole thing, loves doing things like um squads of cha squads of chain gunners to hit scan you into oblivion and if you kill one of them there's a there's an ar there's an archvile who will resurrect it somewhere. Yeah, hidden away behind a wall or pillar somewhere. Yeah, um, monk. I I I hate to, I hate to do this to you, but uh, rails. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um. So next up is assassin. Ooh. And um, this was this was exclusive to Dragon to Magazine Dra to Dragon Magazine. Um. It did not. It did not appear I think in it, any of the in the, any of the heroes books. Oh. Well, there was the uh, executioner variant, but we'll get. Yeah. Now, the <laughs> the um first first off the the assassin. I'd say the I'd say the assassin is a victim of bad timing because it was coming right along this right along when fourth edition was in the, in the decline because because nobody could figure out whether or not everybody was supposed to move over to the essentials classes or not. Mm. Um, the idea of give of giving them a whole new a whole introducing a whole new power source in the form of shadow, I think was a I think was a bad idea. I think it was a bad idea because the only class Shadow had was Assassin. Yeah. 
the idea the idea of a shadow power source is 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 nice, especially since the Shadowfell had been an had been an established um plane, and races like the Shadar Kai base basically live there. You know, is there, it if you look at stuff like Manual of the Planes, it's very clear that they were trying to tease tease a little bit of elements from Spelljammer into that, which is one of those which is one of those. Um, AD and D settings that everybody loves, but is not, but has not yet gotten a fu a full on a full on successor book aside from third party things. That makes me so sad too, because Spelljammer was so goddamn good. Mm -hmm. Yes, agreed. It's one of those ones that I don't think anyone dislikes. You know, which is, I, I, which is saying something because it came at a, it came at a time when um, Lorraine Williams was running TSR and wasn't allowing for testing. Yeah, so Lorraine Williams, the Great Calamity, the Great Calamity. <laughs> I've heard wor I've heard her called worse things. I'll tell you that much. I'm guessing Ernie's one of the ones who said those worst things about her. No, Ernie was Ernie was. I didn't bring I didn't bring her up at all when it came when it came to that. And I'm pretty sure Ernie was already out. I'm pretty sure both Ernie and Ward were already out of the company by then. Um. And if anybody, and so the people from TSR that I've talked to, none of them, none of them want. I'm pretty sure none of them would actually want to talk about her. <laughs> um, they would, they would, and truth be, but the the big problem that I, the big problem that for me personally, assassins are a D. I like a lot of the flavor. I like the concept of the sh of using the Shadowfell as a power source, mm -hmm. but they are outshone by, but. But thematically, they're outshone by two like, classes: the Avenger. The Avenger. The Avenger just does like the everything they do, but better. Yeah, the big pro the big problem is there sh is, I think I think if I think if they came out earlier, like if they came out as a as a side grade to, say, Martial Power or something like that, or e or even if there was a Shadow Power book, maybe they maybe they could have gotten a better shot. But such was not to be. So, uh, important question. Also, though. apparently they're pretty uh, not good. Mm -hmm. Important question for my rating, monk. Do they have any sort of skills or powers named Requiem, Scott, and Pache? No, this was a few years before that. Well, then they get an F. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have we don't have that. In my As mind, I, I do. Me because it's written by Merle Pearly. You and your hate owner for Merle's. Oh, I will never stop. Okay. I, I, I think you're right about like thematically. I think the rogue completely wails them thematically, and the Avenger just defeats them as far as mechanically. Because mm -hmm. I mean, like, what, what, with Assassin, that's such an iconic idea. It's so versatile. Like, so many different kinds of characters could be assassins in different ways. If you tie them that specifically to a particular setting and give them these really particular powers, it's less a general assassin and more like a really specific D and D ish thing. You know, it's too copyrighted. It, it kind of, I don't know. It hurts the fantasy. Also. Yeah. I'd also, bigger. I'd also like to say that the assassin just doesn't really make sense. It's like, okay, so it's like controlling shadows, but it's called the assassin. It's Wait, a striker, but it people. has like no good striker powers to like Paragon. Yeah. It's supposed to be, there's also the fact that it's that it, that the primary defining talent for it is supposed to be based on the assassin's guild that you're that you're associated with. The prob the problem the problem is much like much like the problem that people have with warlocks, myself included. Um, that choice that choice of guild doesn't have um, doesn't have a whole lot of mechanical weight. And fourth edition more so more so than uh, more so than other editions. Was actually making an honest to god attempt at creating a default setting, that being Nethier Vale, with the whole points of light and and all of that, instead of instead of the will they won't they attitude that for that um for that fourth edition has had for, has had for the longest has had for the longest time. You mean fifth edition? Yeah, fifth edition. And um, then you have a uh, three point five's. Uh, it's a Greyhawk, but it's not. Well, not ju not just that, and this is something that I, this is something that I've ranted on for years. But 
D and D has had the, has had has had this shit or get off the pot attitude regarding what type of fantasy it wants to be. Because it wants to try and be all of them, but it, in doing so, it achieves exactly none of them. Precisely. Yeah, D&D really needs to start focusing on its own signature brand of fantasy, because, like, let's be honest, like, D&D has a very specific evocation of what type of fantasy you're playing. It yeah. May have, it, the, yes, it is true that in its early days, it was a hodgepodge of stuff that Gygax and Arneson happened to like. However, much like... The same thing could be said for the original Final Fantasy. <laughs> but as the years have gone on, Final Fantasy has established its own identity. Whether And we've talked about this before, whether it be through jobs, whether it be through crystals, whether it be through recurring names. You're going to be able oh. to differentiate a Final Fantasy project from a console-style RPG project. Yeah, Final, Final Fantasy, Fantasy will always have. Favorite. Which one? Final Fantasy V. Five's pretty good, yeah. Um, but yeah, like, the Assassin is to 4E classes with the American GT opening is to Dragon Ball openings. A little harsh, but I, but I, won't, but I won't deny it. But next we have the Avenger. Which and, we just uh, mentioned oh, blows the Assassin out of the water. Yeah. The Avenger what first showed up in Player's Handbook 2. And could could be argued at could be argued as the as the good as the good answer since paladins could no longer can no longer fall. Thank God. I've I've mentioned very much how I hate that whole that whole fall or die bullshit. Um I am um... I also would be remiss if I don't point out that the word blackguard is just the slang word blackguard, which just means a very ne'er-do-well person, and they should never have named a class that a paladin falls from, or falls into, blackguard. That just, no, no. It, it, it needed a better name. I mean, you could just, you could go the fucking horrible uh, Pathfinder 2 route of calling it the anti-paladin. That's the or, best route. Your giant skull-shaped castle. Or... Yes, I'm an anti-paladin! <laughs> okay, Skeletor! But, uh... I swear to God I had Skeletor. I used that voice in a game, and then for I and I should never have. Because the <laughs> players not only killed that guy, but impersonated him perfectly. So I had a player doing that exact voice my entire rest of the campaign. But the, uh... Don't, don't put Skeletor in your game, kids. Don't make that mistake. <laughs> So, so this Avenger is the answer to is is a is a way of keeping the Paladin from doing fall or die, which is good. Yeah, the Avenger is the I seek out heretics and stab them repeatedly. Kind. That's you want you want to know what you want to know what the example of you want to know what the example I would always use when I need when I would when I would bring in players and somebody asked what what would be an equip what would be an analog for Avengers. Boy. Boy. Boondock Saints. Boondock Saints. Seriously, you must watch that movie religiously. Eh, get it? All right, fuck it. Knife. Uh, actually, actually, Alexander An Anderson actually makes a pretty good example for an event. Yeah, but he yeah, but he has the title of Paladin, so I can't I can't use that. You're technically right, but he's referred but his title is Paladin, so I can't. You're technically right. The best kind of correct. Anyway, he missed it by one word. But we'll get him next time. I use I use the Boondock Saints because because their whole, the whole stick with them is they feel that they are called by God to to um exterminate organized crime. Um, in the same in the same way, a Aven a Avenger fe Avenger feels that it's part of their duty to to root out the enemies of their faith. And uh, and other other members of that faith kind of look at them side eyes. They're glad that they're on their side, but they look at them kind of like loose cannons. I think like paladins like view Avengers like the ecclesiarchy views the Inquisition. Yes, except with a whole lot less grim dark. Mm -hmm. No, depending on setting. Mm -hmm. Um. 
Now, the Avenger, the oh, the Avengers' main claim to fame is the Oath of Enmity power, where, where, um, where, where they hate, they hate, they have so much hatred for some missing. for someone that they may as that they may as well claim to have the armor of contempt from forty k. Um, <laughs> however, the 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 big the big disadva the big disadvantage is that if you have more than one enemy adjacent to you. The oath doesn't ex doesn't work. Like the their oath uh, features are very situational. Um, so they a lot of times they would end up being used as as a, as as secondary attackers along alongside <laughs> or or backup for uh, backups for um defenders. Like Avengers would make like make that good like fifth person like that fifth man they're in a party. It's mm -hmm. like. We've got all our roles covered. We don't need anybody else. Not an Avenger. Yeah. So, be, I'd say I'd also I'd also say that th that there's a lot of there's a lot of indirect things that they that they can do very well. It's just that the core thing that they're supposed to be good at is far is far too demanding of that. Also, um. Avengers can Avengers kind of gave kind of gave us the first in, the first instance of the advantage system that fifth edition does. So so I so because of that to be uh, to be honest I'm putting them as a B. They're able to they're they're able to do they're able to do pretty good as a as a pocket pick but the thing that they're supposed to be good at um they're not the best at. So, yeah, like if you want to just absolutely murder a dude, just pick a ranger. Um, well, the uh, the the oath of enmity to me sounds just just uh, it doesn't really sound like an oath. It just sounds to me like those people in middle school who looked at, uh, at who looked at the people they hated and tried to hate stare them to death. Truth be to truth be told, um, the oh, the way I the way I see the the way I see something like the oath of enmity. It should be treated. It should be treated like one of one of the um, one of the two holy artifacts we have here in the temple. Oh God! The holy book of grudges. No, monk. <laughs> no, you cannot assign the power of your grudge to every Avenger there is. That would cause he the can end. And of, he will. That would cause the end of the cosmos, and you know it. And you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> He can and he will. Uh, but move, moving past that, we get to our we get to our first primal class, which this was a, this was a bold choice to do. Yes, instead instead of being a martial class, um, the next entry we have the barbarian is a primal class. In fact, it is a primal striker. the The barbarian has been the barbarian has been a class where um. As somebody who's a fan of Conan and the like, I've always I've always liked the concept, but the execution of barbarians, especially especially in old school and even and to a certain extent <laughs> even in um, third edition, I wasn't a big fan of. Now in third edition, it's because it's because of some really stupid things I had to deal I had to deal with. Um, the Pathfinder version is somewhat better, but things like the illiteracy stuff and how. And how you, and how if you have to balance that whole rage and fatigue thing, which I made clear when we did the Final Fantasy project, I don't care for that. And barbarians in Final Fantasy aren't illiterate and don't do that anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, even Gao could read. You know, he was raised lit by literal monsters. <laughs> yeah, but... I'm not kidding. But well, they were so, like, literally literal just monsters. handed you the barbarians, like okay. You're gonna be a dipshit. You're gonna get really mad, and you're gonna uh, be very violent, and that's it. But, that's all you do. But um, rage in fourth edition took a different ta took a different tack. There's there's been sto there's always been sto there's been two um, bits of bits of story regarding regarding Norse berserkers. The first one is of course is of course the the running around when running around with nothing on high as balls. After all, berserker mean can mean bare shirt. Um, but there's also there's also the implication that 
ber that berserkers were possessed by animal spirits, and that's the approach that they ended up going with. They 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 channel they channel primal they channel primal spirits, and oh, and a lot of and it kind of gives them a, it gives some of their rage dailies a bit of a stance system. Um. This is oh, this is oh, and this is one this is one particular class where they kind of tease the idea of a class feature acting as the subclass. There's a, there's a few others that did this, but if you want the old school barbarian, pick Rage Blood Vigor. Since the, since they get since they get in, they get swift charge, so they they can instantly charge once once someone dies. And every time they kill an enemy, they get temporary hit points. Um, Thaneborn Triumph is for the chieftain styles who want to dip a little bit into leaders. Um, and they and they can they can do a shout that penalizes enemy defenses. And as well as well as the fact that enemies they bloody grant grant um attack, grant bonuses. So, so a bit of bulliness. Thunderborn Wrath is for those who want to look, put, be a bit more magical. The fluff is, has it that their battle cries are so awesome. Spirits of Thunder follow them and join in whatever whenever he starts hollering. <laughs> yeah, forty barbarians just love to reach deep inside nature spirits. Grasp yeah. and whirling slayers for those who want to do dual wielding because. Dual wielding is one of my favorite weapon archetype fantasies, but so many games fuck it up. And uh, and on another one of our pro, pro, uh, on on another one of our uh, uh, particular um, programs, uh, dual wielding there was an accidental trip into genius. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. And of course, if you didn't want to do the magical, you could you could just use Rage Strike, which burns unused um, dailies with the Rage keyword, so you can just hit really, really, really hard. And yeah, you can get some real deep penetration with Rage Strike. Hey, phrasing. <laughs> but all things, all things oh, can phrasing. All things considered, because of the fact that they're able to be really good at what they do, and they do do really good at fulfilling fulfilling the fantasy that they're built for, barbarians, I think, are an S. Because after all, after all, what is best in life? To crush our enemies, drive them before us, and hear the lamentations of their women. Didn't the first Conan movie take that from like a Genghis Khan quote? Yes. But... It doesn't matter. It's all awesome, and Genghis Khan was probably a barbarian anyway. After all, he fucked enough women to infect 1.2 percent of the entire current human populace with a little bit of his DNA. Ah, uh, no, there's an aspirational yeah, lifestyle. <laughs> Although, um. Never be very careful bringing up Genghis Khan around the Mongolian if, unless you want to hear them rant ab rant about it for hours on end. Still, you know, I might do I, that I, just because I would want to hear them rant about yeah, it for yeah, hours right. on end. You're not selling me off this idea, Muck. You're you're uh, you're you're only you're only threatening us with a good time. Yeah. But next. Another one from Player's Handbook 2, the Bard. Which the Bard is the Bard in 4th edition is um interesting. Now, first off, the um some grogs raged at the raged at the fact that bards were not in the core handbook. The reason for this was that they needed more time to tinker with them to make them work. The same thing went with the druid and the sorcerer. And truth be told, I think I think that was actually the right move. <laughs> Because it gave because um, when we actually got it, it was worth the wait. First off, instead of using divine magic, they use arcane magic, which I which I think I think was I think actually suits them better than div the idea of bards using divine magic never made a whole lot of sense to me. 
point of addition that they used divine magic. I thought they always used our. I mean, I don't think it really did with the druids either. Um, I, just... I can see the argument for druids, but like, for when did Bards use divine magic? It wasn't in third. Um, use arcane in third. I thought they I... used arcane the whole way up. I may, I'm, I may be, I may be, I may be, fl I may be flipping on this, but um, of co of course, if I brought up the AD and D version, well, AD and D bards were a mess. Let's just leave it at that. They were a fucking mess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bards, bards in third cast arcane. All, all right, I stand, I stand corrected on that. I don't know where I got the idea that so they back on rails that they cast divine, but um. Now, the one of the one of the big obviously they have a bit of the skill monkey since one of their features is skill versatility, which gives them a bonus to skill checks that they don't have trained. Um, the the fa but the big the big thing that they ha that they had to to their name was the multi class versatility, so they. They are the only class who could take multi-class feats from multiple classes, and that al that alone is something I'll, I'll always find interesting that Fourth Edition did. Instead of trying to do the whole take up take a level in in a class for multi-classing, you had a separate degree of feats that you could use to dip in and out of. When it comes to mul when it comes level to by level multi-classing, is just diet mul uh, diet weight by. Well, the problem level by level multi-classing is diet three point five. The problem <laughs> that it, the problem that ends up happening with that le with that level based multi classing as it's presented in in th in three point in three point five and in five is you end up doing a lot of work for something very specific that you're trying to get, and it means you have to take a lot of bullshit in the process. When if anybody's multi classing, they're multi classing to get something specific. They splash, yeah. This is the reason why the phrase dip class became a thing. Dip class. This is the reason why even a thought experiment as horrid as pun pun the magic kobold still requires three fucking classes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, I, I don't. I'm not sure that multi-classing was the brilliant innovation the third edition guys thought it was going to be. It wound up being disappointing in that edition, and then it almost universally only played to power gamers since then. <laughs> It also has like the problem where classes end up not getting the signature thing they're really good at for several levels, since like five E Paladin's not getting smite till second fucking level. Yeah. Now, the other there's also there's also there's also stuff like Song of Rest, which get which lets them which lets them spend healing surges more, but um. I'd say, and obviously, the, obviously, their subclass feature is their bardic virtue. Um, the core one, the or at the start, you had um, virtue of cunning. So slide out. So it, whenever an enemy, mi whenever an enemy misses, you can you can slide that ally a bit. Um, Valor grants temporary HP to an ally who bloodies or kills an enemy, and then arcane power introduced the ves the virtue of prescience, where you can interrupt. Interrupt enemy attacks by by adding a wisdom modifier to that ally's defenses. Truth be truth be told, um, most pe most people I know who played bard played um, played cunning bards. Didn't see a whole lot of people doing doing valor or prescience. Yeah, I, again, prescience I think is a little too narrow of an idea. You can like cunning bard is almost like the archetypical bard, you know, mm -hmm. like and even valor's bard I, I kind of see, but like man, I, I don't. There's get also, there's also the fact that um, sli shifts um shifts in for, in fourth edition are extremely powerful because when when you shift when you shift, especially when you're dealing with uh, melee fights. Um, that if that enemy has to pursue, you're giving you're giving them a chance. You're giving them a chance to do an attack of opportunity. That's the reason why um kobolds became so infamous, and why I've told the story about how I put I pitted my first fourth edition run. I pitted 
my players a bunch of bunch of cold balls and they thought it would be easy pickings and they got wiped. Oh yeah. Don't fuck with cold balls, man. <laughs> oh. Although I, I think I would extend the idea that prescience is too narrow of an idea. I would extend that to their subclass sort of thing with the bardic virtues. I feel that's just kind of a bit more specific than the devs thought it would be. I don't see, I don't see I don't see it that way. Um, I think the the only one I'd say I'd say it's I'd say it's kind of a gold, silver, and bronze medal thing. Um, cunning is that cunning is at the top is at the top tier. Mid tier is valor, and um, press is pre and prescience is is the bronze. But one of the things that one of the things that I really liked is the narrative when it came to when it came to bards. Instead, instead of instead of them just being just being oh oh they're oh they're a, they're a, they're, a, they're a sword of fighter but they're, they're they're a sword of face man they're a sword of caster, no bards literally derive power from stories. And that and I find I find that I find that to be f to be far more interesting than the than the um ha than the not qu not quite scald not quite scald or or um. Or Celtic priest approach that approach that bards have had for the longest time, or the poor man's Pied Piper of Hamlin. And it's for that um, reason. Somebody that I'm, correct. Oh, I'm putting bards in as an A. They've. Yeah, I'd say that. I'd say the the only thing the only thing that stops them from being an S is the fact that they don't that the fact that they don't have they don't have as wide a degree of versatility within their role as barbarians do. Mm. Yeah, I, I think there's something more combat applicable about being able to berserk and being a big strong muscle guy. Uh, it does kind of give barbarians the leg up. I think you, well, they, like bar bars are cool conceptually, but. They're kind of beside the point of fourth edition a little bit. And I think you're right. I think that kind of changes their tier a little. Well, if the the reason the reason why I say that is something that something that I made clear with Barbarian is that there's a bunch of di is that there's a bunch of different ways that they can do the do the berserker thing and still be and still be somewhat with still be within their particular niche. Whereas the whereas the bard it, the bard um dips into so many. The bard is magic loot. I know you're right. The the bard kind of loses focus as he branches out, whereas the barbarian keeps a tight focus but has actual distinct options. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. So next we re we return to um uh, we return we return to psionic classes with the with art with in my personal opinion the single best defender archetype Ooh. in fourth edition. That being the battle mind. They are they and a are surprisingly the effective class, yeah. They are the best defenders. Others can others can mark or hit or hinder. Battle minds are punishers. They are they are they are tough motherfuckers on, on their own. But bat, but their marking um, mechanic, battle minds demand, isn't just a penalization like it is for say fighter. It lets they have a specific at will that is tied to it. So if that foe hits, they can immediately fuck them. Yeah, like they teleport to them and do the damage they dealt to the ally, if I remember correctly. No. Um. The th the other th the other thing is that they is that they can they can really stack up resistances. So they so. Oh yeah, battle minds are durable motherfuckers. They're du they're durable motherfuckers, and they are very good at punishing allies that. Uh, not allies, but enemies that do not attack them. Instead of instead of just softening the blow of enemies' attacks to to their allies, they they make it so that if you don't if you don't start focusing on him, you're gonna keep getting your ass kicked. So battle mines are an S. <laughs> battle mines also have the uh, awesome pleasure of having the amazing brutal barrage. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think if. I, I remember playing a um a dragon a dragonborn um battle mind at one, at one point 
who took Iron Guardian as his paragon path and was a, and was a fucking wrecking ball. You could probably say that like battle mines are the best at fitting the classic idea of a tank. Yeah. There are certainly They eat all your damage, ask for more, and when you don't hit them, they fucking pound your face into hate. Yeah. Now, next is Cleric. And cl um, Cleric, ha Cleric, you ha first off, <laughs> fortunately, you don't have the situation of um, Codzilla that we've talked about in the past, Cleric or Druid. <laughs> do, 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 but for for a lot of people, the cleric is the fourth edition cleric is the quintessential example of the le of the leader um, role. The dynamic leader. Mm -hmm. One, th this is and this is where I want to bring up the he the um the reason why. Fifth edition's attempt at hit dice, which is suppo which is supposed to be an answer to healing surges from fourth, really isn't. The reason why the healing surges, but like giving them lobotomy. Healing surges were specifically introduced, and I ha and I have the receipts on this, on this. They were introduced <laughs> as a, as a means to keep the he to keep um to keep out the heal bot problem. Because that had been a problem in third in third edition, where because they were the most reliable type of healers, it was almost a necessity to have a cleric in your party. And if you didn't, a bunch of gold to buy wands to cure moderate wounds. Right, and it it unfortunately is in that Venn diagram of both necessary by the way the game is expecting you to play it, and really boring in that there's not much option there. You just use the best healing available to you in the most plentiful supply the moment it is most effective. Like, that's it. Of course, it's really, it's such a no-brainer thing. There's, yeah, it's like, you, you can be a healer in 3.5 and be literally brain dead. But the, the hit dice in 5th edition aren't, stro aren't strong enough to fill that particular niche. The, because... I mean, first off, it's a variant rule about whether or not you can even use them in combat. Um, even if e even if you're using them outside of combat, it's it's still not good enough. It's shite. Because because if you it's if, if you get if you get your ass kicked in a fight and you ch and you decide to take a short rest to try and heal up, you have to be praying to the dice gods that you end up rolling in, that you end up rolling enough high numbers on your hit dice to actually heal you a, signi a significant amount. Whereas in um in f and granted this is somewhat the this is somewhat the case with the recoveries in 13th age but not nearly as much because when because because recoveries in 13th age are a set of charges. Aren't they like single instances of uh, like dice rolls? Yes. Instead of instead of a unified pool <laughs> of dice. And in fourth, obviously, it was you heal for one fourth of your maximum. And Heroes Against Darkness does the same thing with the rally. In fact, Heroes Against Darkness is a better unification of additions, in my in my personal opinion, and it's free. Um, Heroes Against Darkness is awesome. Now, truth be t truth be told, there there are really um. There are really two major builds that I would always see with clerics. It would either be the strength build or the wisdom build. The strength build is for those who want to do the want to do the cleric with a cleric with a with a mace, um, who is some who, despite the fact that he despite the fact that that there are rules against killing, the rules are fuzzy on the subject of kneecaps. <laughs> There's, there's ah yes, strength clerics, also known as diet paladins. Um, whereas wisdom clerics oh, were, were often nicknamed laser clerics. I can't imagine why that would be. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, 
And of, of course, there's the fact that Channel Divinity is re is reskinned into an in into an encounter prob into an encounter power, with feats providing providing powers for specific deities, which is something that I liked because a lot of a lot of times whenever whenever you'd play cleric, um, the god that you worship doesn't really matter all that much. Like no matter what deity you're no matter what deity you're worshiping, you're still you're still gonna get some degree of healing. You're still gonna get turn undead for some reason, and you're still go and you're still going to get you're still going to be s expected to be a healer. And for certain deities, like say Cord, who's basically Thor, why why would why would that deity focus on healing in any way? Why would a why would a deity of battle focus on that? Because cleric, duh. <laughs> yeah, and the the that friction between the class role and the actual place in the fiction itself is um, it's always uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And not every issue, not every uh, edition resolves it with any aplomb. So. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say, I'd say, I'd say, for, I'd say fourth did, I'd say fourth did it fairly well. Thirteenth Age resolved this issue significantly better because of how because of how big of a deal your um, domain talents are. But yeah, Thirteenth Age clerics are probably my favorite types of clerics. Yeah. But with that said, I would put the clerics solidly in the. I'd put I'd put them in A. I'm t I was tempted to put them in S. But the but they're not but they don't have quite enough variance. It's really close though. Fun fact, I'm a fourth level cleric of Nyarlathotep. No you're not. You don't, yeah, you don't know that. You don't have enough tentacles for that. Hey, you don't know what's behind my profile picture, buddy. I know I know a bad bluff when I see it. <laughs> so next is, next is sorry Zan but I have to the druid but is it the mystery of the druid <laughs> so <laughs> the the funny th the funny thing about the primal power source which I'm glad I'm glad they made I'm glad they made into a power source instead of trying to shoehorn them into divine casters is that one it's the spirit of the world and two it's the spirit of the world telling telling all telling all the gods and demons to get off my lawn and it's the spirit of the world that specifically says fuck you in particular mm -hmm. oh yeah, the problem with like cleric, uh, no, not clerics, but druids using divine magic is, it was in the like three point five. It's just, you know, they use divine magic, but instead of God, they like pray to trees and shit. Yeah, now they like to pray to trees. And some shit. of some of the the best cleric is the best <laughs> divine cleric is obviously one who channels their magic through weed. <laughs> the the um dru the druid was. The dru a lot of the dru a lot of the druids um typical abilities were kind were kind of shifted over into other primal classes um shape changing is is largely is large is largely cos is largely cosmetic though there are a series of wi of wild shaping powers that you can take um and bet and between the between that, you usually have usually have two builds. You e either you go, either you go with you go with nature magic, a shapeshifter, or somewhere in between. And one of the, and one of the fe one of the features that one of, and this is demonstrated by one of the features lets you get three at will powers instead of two, or if you're a human druid, four at wills. But one of them has to be one of them has to be humanoid. One of them has to be beast. So, I'd say because of the fact that you're going to be switching between either being a humanoid caster or a beast, um, mall and mall and brawler, 
Hmm. I honestly think the Druid is an S. <laughs> Simply because of the fact that while, while, um, while you do have to make the choice about which one you're going to be favoring, you're not limited to that choice. It's not like you're. It's not like it's saying you either pick that you're better. You're um. You're a caster or you're a caster or a skin or a skinwalker. No, you can you can dip between either as you like. Yeah, it's like literally part of the the forty druids fluff that it walks that balance between going. going. There's also the fact that. Shape changing, the way the way that it works in fourth doesn't involve doesn't involve the doesn't necessarily in, involve me having to have separate character sheets for every wild shape. Yeah, which is nice. Oh. Now next is the fighter, <laughs> and well, who oh boy was this a was this a massive massive ass improvement? We no longer have the feeder gone or the days of feeding. Mm -hmm. Now, like we we said before that the cleric is the picture example of the of, of the of the um leader. The fighter is the picture example of the defender as well as the first example that was given of the martial power source. Now, they do, they are, as far as, as far as defenders, they have the largest amounts of single target damage. And in some cases, they can even out damage strikers if they're, if they can, if they're good at opportunity attacks. Um, and they, t and once you factor in martial power one and two, you can get them in five flavors. Great weapon fighters. So... So stri so backdoor strikers, guardian your sword your sword and bo your sword and board, and get and gets tied of and gets tied of iron, which is fucking awesome. Um, battle rager, for those who love their temporary hit points but don't want to go full barbarian. Um, tempest, for those who want to do dual wielding and heavy armor. And brawler, for those who just want a one handed weapon and the ability to 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 be at a motherfucker with another motherfucker. You use that line hey, a lot, monk. monk. It almost makes me think you love it. <laughs> hey, monk. You hear that? The grogs are reading over you mentioning the martial power source. Fuck em. music to my ears. We don't give a shit about grogs. Oh. I will, I will be flat out honest. Fighters are an S. They're an S because they're an S because the only the only bad thing I have to say about them is that several of the fighter abilities grant extra effects depending on the type of weapon that you have, which was a neat idea, but they didn't fully explore it. <coughs> it was it was very power specific. Like some powers had extra effects if you had, say, a hammer. When in tr truth be told, I think um. I think what they should have done is give is give a different passive based on what weapon you have equipped. And that was kind of tackled with the uh, weapon specific like expertise feats. Yeah, it was it was, but given the fact that the fighter is supposed to be good with all we good with all weapons, I would have preferred a a way that actually makes me want to use. More than more than a preferred weapon setup, which has always been the problem with that whole. Oh, you can equip any type of weapon. Yeah, but does that really matter when I'm going to be using one weapon type for my whole career and not changing it much? And the, I guess you could say that the fighter job in the FF Legend project is our answer to that because because <laughs> his approach is I will carry all the weapons and I will use all of them. <laughs> okay, so uh, I paid for the whole Warhammer. I'm going to use the whole Warhammer. Mm -hmm. He said beyond that, he to death with its own uh, grip. Oh, dang it, that joke fell. Yeah, but uh, and of course, the, of course, the brawler build can also be used for for the whole human shield maneuver, and it and that particular type of build was something that. 
theoretically you could do in the past, but in but using third edition grappling rules is a case of let's not and say we did. How about let's not and say we didn't? Third edition grappling rules and by extension fifth edition grappling rules are fucking terrible. Mm -hmm. What third edition grappling rules? I don't know what those are. Those don't exist. You lie, Exactly. Man. Exactly. Oh, now I just remembered an old uh, fourth edition uh, teaser commercial where in the 3.5 segments, like, I grapple the troll. It's like, what's that, that do again? That wasn't a, that wasn't a commercial. <laughs> that, was the te that was the teaser for fourth edition's announcement at Gen Con. I should All know if I was there the, for that. We hear the other shoe drop. <laughs> um, now, next is Invoker. Um, Invoker is not to be confused with Evoker. And the the fluff of them is, some, is something that I find in, that I find interesting. The idea of them is that they are divine controllers who have a more direct relationship with their god than clerics do. They're sort of like divine warlocks. In other words, they're on a mission from Gad. Damn it. <laughs> I was waiting, Mark. Although, although I'd say the Blues Brothers are more bards with an invoker multi-class. Um, but the, but it is funny. What are you talking about? The blues the blues brothers are both clearly rogues. Mm -hmm. But the the subclass mechanic for them is their divine covenant. Basically, that basically that determines what their patron god intended them for. Um, and the, there were originally three, and then in divine power there was a there was a fourth one brought in. Um, supposedly that there, there was a Divine Power 2 book in the works, but they scrapped it for the Essentials shit. I honestly want to live in the alternate universe where they actually made Divine Power 2. I want to... I just, I just want to live in the world where Essentials doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. um, where it's a mere nightmare that haunts my dreams. Um, preserv preservation... Um, it... Our, are is better at assisting allies. Um, Wrath is better at is better at dealing is better at dealing damage, and ma um, malediction. Malediction's like the status effect one. Yeah, it's very it's very much it's very much the debuffer and um, invokers. I would say are I would say are a solid um a. They're actually actually a bit tankier than wizards. The arc the arcane controller. There, they def they definitely have a good they definitely have a good amount of variety, but the f but the thing that holds them back from any from anything higher is gonna be th is gonna be how you work them into the fluff. Because invokers, to me that to me they always felt they always felt like they're one st like they're one step off from an a from an avatar of a particular deity. And I could see some arguing that that that, that kind of thing is um, is going to be hard to justify having multiple invokers, or that it might be a little bit too special. You also kind of run into the problem where they might turn the PCs into Mary Sues, since you know they get their power directly from God. Yeah, I've seen some compare them to the favored soul from three point five, which was which was just a divine sorcerer. Let's be honest. Um, well, and they have the problem in common with favored soul, where like okay, it's fine to mash up different classes when you're a player, kind of see what comes out of that because that can be really fun. But if you're like a designer. It feels like it's awkward to mash them up because you're not appealing to some kind of well-known archetype now. Now you're just taking the pieces of the game and saying, oh, look, we can make a new different thing. And it's one of those Jurassic Park things where, yeah, I know you can. Maybe you should think of if you should. It's, it's 
what I know what a cleric is kind of in terms of like, you know, like a holy hero. I know what a wizard is. Like are there any cleric wizards in literature? Not really. I mean, there are in in mm. some of the of the older books of Tolkien melting pots. Um and then of course then there's the fact that settings novels based off of the idea of the cleric from D and D expanded upon them, but that's you know that's the cart uh, before the horse at that point. I, and then if you really want to stretch uh, definitions and split hairs, uh, you can uh, mention the fact that in uh, Tolkien's uh, setting, Middle Earth, wizards are outright divine beings. They don't like to use arcane magic; they use divine magic. It seemed like arcane magic in a Tolkien setting would be like a horrific evil thing. Yeah, I think that's I think that's like part of the thing with Tolkien. Well, but you know, the guy was a devout Catholic, so that's really to be expected. I'd say it. I'd say it. I don't think I don't think his Catholicism factors into it, but more of the fact that there's an implied subtle there's an implied subtle magic in everything in Middle Earth, or even even using even using wor even speaking words that ha that have some degree of power can have a tangible effect. Uh, the old words of power schema is always nice. Mm -hmm. um, but there was magic outside of the magic of the wizards. The dwarves had inherent magic that they that they could use to imbue light and such into their items that they crafted. Mm -hmm. However, this is getting in the weeds. Yeah. Now next we have the monk, and all right, part of. The I will ad I will admit that it's a bit weird that the monk is a psionic class, but trying to make them into a mar into a martial striker would probably be a bad idea, and giving them their own power source in the form of key would have been an even worse idea because of all the things they'd be cut off from. So if it means they have, but on the plus side, we did get the concept of key focuses as a type of magic item, so you can still have that unarmed monk, but still give him something akin to a weapon. Even if it's a weapon in the same way that a um, a spellcaster's magical focus is a quote unquote weapon, <laughs> I thought it, I thought it was a nice workaround. Now, monk in third edition and and in Pathfinder are the poster boy it. for mad multiple ability dependency because of all the de because of because you need to have. You need to have several ability scores at a high amount to be relatively effective. Monks in um, in fourth edition very much feel very much feel like a pin, very much feel like a pinball because of the full discipline mechanic with a lot of their powers. What full discipline does is it makes certain powers be usable as either an attack or a move action. And a lot of times with that move action, it's not just a standard move. It's a it could be flight, it could be move and you leave a trail of fire or some or some other bits of craziness. Insanity, what a fine line. And because because of that and because of the fact that they embody a whole lot of a whole lot of mobilities. In fact I'd say that I'd say that they're probably one of the more mobile classes in the entire game. Oh no doubt. They and the and the fact that they um they have some abilities that probably should have been eroded out. <laughs> There's also the fact that flurry of blows is not just attack a bunch of times like it's done in the like it's been in the past. Flurry of blows is essentially an extra at will that you can build that you can build upon, or you or you. Or um, or add or add extra oomph to cer to certain powers, based on your based on your choice of discipline, like fl um cent um centered wind that could let you slide enemies around, stone f stone fist deals more damage, and iron and iron soul lets you you lets you lets you disorientate and it lets the monk use weapons. Oh. And of course, the of course the paragon paths are are for a monk are equally ridiculous. One of them, one of them, letting you punch people's souls out of their bodies. 
This does not surprise me. Yeah, the the Paragon Pass get about as ridiculous as... Well, Joel, not to put you on the spotlight, but they're about as ridiculous as martial arts in your game. <laughs> Man, like, that's not wrong. <laughs> so, and then spotlight. you have that one Paragon Pass that gives you, like, holy sun powers. So now you can have the power of God and anime. Actually, actually, I was I was gonna go with um with that one with that one having the power of Sendo. Eh. I mean, you might it might as well just be a Hamon user. Mm-hmm. Don't fuck with me. I've got the power of God and anime on my side. So, this might be a bit of bias on my part because of my gimmick, but monks are an S. <laughs> Monks are pretty I rad, will say though. this, Monk, though. I already had Monk there, and I've never even played this game. I will say this, since we're more talking about, like, theme and feel of the class and not so much mechanic. Monk has, like, a lot of really weird gimmicks to it. Like, it has these feats where it can gain bonuses to its attacks while it's holding weapons, but it isn't using the weapons, and it's actually using its key focuses. It's It's kind of weird. A lot of that, I'd say, is where there there is an, there is the unfortunate um, issue of how how do you how do you manage to let a class that's not known for using weapons keep up with all the weapon users? And like I said, key focuses was their workaround. So it works okay. Next up, we have paladins. Now, in, incidentally, because of the fact that the whole fall or die bullshit isn't a th- isn't a thing in fourth edition. Some people um, interpreted it to mean that paladins were immune to falling damage. <laughs> okay. Oh. Deus vault. Deus vault. Deus vault. Some people are uh, are big jokesters, monk. Now they're they're more they're more focused on be on. On being on being a divine meat shield rather rather than rather than Deus Vault, most of the Deus Vault stuff is handled by the Avenger. Yeah, but it's still kind of a funny meme. Mm-hmm. Oh, and you're e- you're either gonna go full you're either gonna go full strength as the at uh, full strength as the tank paladin or or the or the more casty charisma based one. Um, but the, but even but even with but first off, some people didn't like the fact that the that the nine alignment grid was re- was reduced to a re- was reduced to a five point scale. On one end, you had you had um lawful good good, new. It goes from one side to the other. It was lawful good good neutral evil chaotic evil. Um, but person personally, I fi- I find that. While the alignment chart is is one of the more enduring internet memes, whenever you try and apply a morality system to the alignment chart, you tend to have problems. Which is which is why you which is why you had paladins as being a big <coughs> problem class because because they had a rules mandated reason to be a dick all the time. Uh. I... It worked. I liked the alignments when there were like two of them. When it was like chaos or law, because like then it's just allegiance to like a general principle, or even even better, the side of a fight which has nothing to do with morality. It's just at that point, it's just real politic. Like yeah, one of the worst mistakes D and D ever made was trying to make their own philosophy and having nine distinct points on it that were all not necessarily opposed. It's completely nonsensical, and lawful tattletale is one of the worst interpretations that has endured. Also known as lawful like alignment, stupid. Uh, oh, like, traditional alignment in D anD D is like a soup that everybody keeps trying to fix, but they only fuck up worse. It's it, that's a good analogy because it's it's like a soup made out of an inherently bad ingredients, you know. In that, in like, that regard, like, I'd say, like I'd say the better choy analogy. and cilantro. I'd say the better analogy is the Leaning Tower of Pisa. The tower, at least Leaning Tower of Pisa, uh, it, it has at least some inherent value, though. You can still use the tower more or less for what it was intended, and it's like a beautiful landmark. You no, know? 
Like th this is more like if you just straight up painted something in fresh poop and then to continue to put more poop onto it to keep it fresh. It's oh, like so you're a Jackson not... Pollock painting. Yeah, it's very Jackson Pollock. <laughs> <laughs> that also, not that it actually matters at all, but 4E called it a neutral alignment unaligned, which I kind of find stupid, but, you know, semantics. Yeah. Uh, is that any dumber than neutrality being its own alignment? Trauma did that best, you know. Incid oh, my wife, hello. Incidentally, the Grogs did bitch about... Here's the, here's the thing that I find really funny. People, people for the longest time, bitched about paladins being a problem class. That gets fixed, and then people complain that paladins should be lawful good. Yeah. Well, don't you know, Mildred? Grogs uh, don't have a logical basis for anything. They just kind of complain at anything vaguely new. Oh, yeah, Problem I is, he's, on, he's not wrong. Mm -hmm. Now, Palad, the Smite Evil was be, was reformatted into Divine Challenge, which I actually think is better. A, be, a, be, a better name for it. And, of course, they had Channel Divinity. Um, but inc incidentally, they're the Paladins get the most healing surges out of any out of any class. And some of their powers allow them to burn um, healing surges, chief among them, of course, being lay on hands, where they can where they can spend one of their healing surges to heal an ally as if they spent it. Um, I'd say, I'd I'd say the the fantasy of the paladin is well is more is more or less in there. The only but there but there's not a whole lot of there's not a whole lot of wiggle room for what the paladin can do. And even when it comes to the casty part of paladins, that that part is that part is well established by the by the cleric. So the highest grade that I can give them is an A. They're very good at the they're very good at the one particular niche that they have, but you're not going to have a whole lot of variation in that niche. And there's not a lot of ways to realize that very limited band of heroism they're trying to go for. They realize it well, so I'd give them the A, yeah. But like, where do you go from Paladin? You know, yeah. What other ways can you be a Paladin? It's, it's, it's pretty one note. The big, the, big the big problem, I'd say, is that there is, is the assumption that you have to have Paladin in the very tanky um, equipment setup. Which I'd I'd say I'd, and I'd say kind of kind of limits them. Granted, granted, the less tanky kind of paladin is the Avenger, which we already talked about. Now, next we return to um the, to the to psionic classes with the well scion. Now, first off, I'd like to point out that the that the argument the argument that fifth edition had for psionics being being a subclass of wizard who just casts spells with their mind was fucking stupid. And I will brook no <laughs> like most things are fine. And I will brook no def no defense for it. <laughs> we didn't come here to talk about things after all. <laughs> like, no, it was it was just a it was just a really dumb it was it was a really dumb idea because there's no precedent for that kind of thing. Uh yeah, it's I mean, stupid. didn't um, didn't like um, A D and D uh, one E have like psionics as if you like rolled really well in character creation, you got some like inherent spell casting that didn't need components. No, oh, it wasn't. I mean, if if you rolled really high as a char character gen, you would get a random psychic power. And how about this? It doesn't really matter if it had a precedent in d uh, editions before. It's fucking stupid. Eh, I mean, like. I, I think it's a cool thing to add to a setting in which it is appropriate, you know? Like, put that shit in Dark Sun, that works really good. But, like, as yeah, like, base, like, Sword and Spell like, D&D. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like, isn't, like, isn't, like, Dark Sun, like, built on part of the uh, premise that psionics are, is, like, more accepted and more used than arcane magic? Yeah. Because arcane magic... Like, I, I know, like, the I remember there's, like, I remember there's, like, um, like, Dark Sun has this thing where it's, like, Hey, if you want, uh, give everybody one of these uh, cantrips. Now, psionics and... in um, psionics in fourth were 
were um a con they were very much a controller class and the the um, key the key set the key setup with them was ve was very much was very centered around um their around their discipline focus either being either being shapers telekinetics or te or telepaths um they had ritual casting for some reason but i'd say i'd i'd say when it i'd say when it comes to when it comes when it comes to when it comes to say when it comes to um psionics the they they definitely have a whole they definitely have quite a degree of of variance to them i'd say i'd say i'd say the whole I'd say the only real problem that I have is that I have a hard time rationalizing the concept of psionic constructs that was that was brought in. What with what with um what with the shaper focus? Like you personally, that's always been my favorite kind of psion. Yeah, I, I can get that, but but in term but in terms of but when you think of the fantasy of being a psychic, most people are going to go for the telekinesis. Telekinesis, Kyle. That's, That's telekinesis, I, I, Kyle. I would put the blame for that on the fact that pop culture doesn't really have a definitive uh, sort of cultural image of what the fuck psychic powers are. Um, to be fair, it's such right? like a, a wide and come. It's such like a like a wide area of what it is. It's so. I, I don't think it's embodied in a single character, but I mean, like. You know it when you see it. Like whenever someone's doing the the psychic powers face and some shits flying around, they can hear your thoughts. Like you know what that is. People know what that is. Yeah. I do think I do think that the that when it comes to when it comes to the when it comes to the when it comes to the um powers, it certain it certainly fills it certainly fills its role. But I I probably I probably put I probably put Scions as I'm thinking either an A or a B. I put um, them in as B. Yeah, I could I could see that because the big the big Maybe problem this... is um. I think I think in, I think instead of putting some putting something putting something like the shaper focus of being able to create constructs, they really should have focused on giving on giving more variation to to um to ESP and telekinesis the things that people are going to more associate <laughs> with with psychic powers well you could do other yeah, stuff I mean, like, too you know like mind control or pyro like, like the the stuff where you can use fire with your mind what is that pyrokinesis Pyrokinesis. yeah like shit like that that would have been great and they went with you can have a robot i don't know man i mean be, uh, I mean, all a shaper scion really is is like a green lantern without the lamp, that ring. <sighs> that sucks even more. Do you not like Green Lantern? Yeah, they can <sighs> they can do a whole lot of pushing around, but um, when it comes to when it comes to being able to control the battlefield, there's uh, there's other options that I think I think outdo them. Um. Now next is the Ranger. I e. For the most part, the most snake bitten class in D and D. Ouch! Like the you truth. Look, you look at er, you look at early days, and you look at early days, and you look at you look at fifth edition. The ranger has had the problem of be of being outdone by other classes. It's been, it's had the third wheel problem. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It can it can you it can use it can use its fair share of weapons. But the fighter can use them better. It can use its fair, and more importantly, if you more importantly, what is it? The big problem is what can a ranger do that isn't outdone by the druid? Well, the druid's like the thing that you always have to compare them to because they're in the same environment. You know, like if you play, take a fighter in the forest, you know, the ranger has a little bit of an up on him. Same thing with a thief. You know, a thief is great at sneaking. In the forest, the ranger is a better fighter and as good as sneaking. With the druid, they've got all that, and they can turn to a fucking bear. Like, there's no contest. Obviously, druid. Yeah. Like the the ranger has the problem where fundamentally you're basically just a boy scout with superpowers. Mm -hmm. 
Now that is actually a problem. The four, the fourth edition druid, is is one of the classic examples of the striker. They can they can before be, ranger. <laughs> yeah, they can they can either, they can either be really focused on one enemy one enemy or irritate se or irritate um, several of them. Um, and in a, in a smart move, although although good brother Ash will probably will probably scream to the high heavens otherwise until until his voice gives out. The spell casting parts for for the ranger were removed, which, to be quite honest, I think I think that was I think that was a smart thing because when people think of the ranger archetype, the spell casting part is probably the last thing on their mind. Yeah, they usually think yeah. uh, Aragorn. Like Aragorn. legitimately, the titu the the epitomal, the the eponymous, whatever word you want to use in this particular context. Archetypal. Ranger. Actually Archetypal. There you go. Archetypal Ranger yeah. is Aragorn. It is Aragorn acting as Strider of the Rangers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you know you you look around for shit, you find your way around shit, and then you stab shit. Mm -hmm. And I didn't. And even with, even with that, they've they were shitty casters in thir in third edition and in fifth edition. They're also shitty casters. Oh, and the and uh, much like much like the fight much like the fighter, it comes in five flavors. Um, Archer, which gets you defensive mobility as a as a bonus feat, so you can get some extra defense against opportunity attacks. Beast mastery for those who want their animal companion. Um, which which um do, which is nice, but it does it does have a bit of an issue. Um, Hunter... There's always, go ahead. I always manage to fuck up Animal Companion, you know, because every single time that you have a player in a game that wants a pet, they're gonna make a pet out of something fucking cool, not the thing that comes with their class, you know. Um, it's like you can I... have to be pre-packaged an animal, or you could find a fucking thing in the wild, you know, like a ranger, and tame it and make it your your friend, and obviously go with the second one, you know. I mean, I mean, who wouldn't want an owl bear as a pet? Um, I have had people tame trolls and direwolves and fucking dragons. Like we had one, we had so one guy who had a, um, we had one guy who had a displacer beast as a pet. Yeah, and that's so much cooler that's than a rusty. wolf. Oh, it's like why have a wolf when you can have a blink dog? Yeah, for real. Oh, the 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 big the big. Pro the big problem, the big problem when it comes to, first off, the the big problem when it comes to the when it comes to the pet is when it comes to the pet use is that it's it's going to be very reliant on you being on you being a archery focus. So beast mastery is it's it's one that it's one that's not, it's one that's nice, but it didn't get picked all that much because most pe most people would rather would rather not deal with the hassle of even a micro version of a character sheet. Um, mm -hmm. Hunter is for is for those is a switch hitter, and it's basically for those who want to, who can't figure out if they want to shoot or they want to stab. So it so they get quick draw for free, so they can do both. Uh, become shooty stabby. Suck at two things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the common the common build with hunters is sword in one hand and hand crossbow in the other. Huh? Wait, are we talking about a um an AEDU ranger subtype? Or are we talking about the essential hunter? Um, we're talk we're talking about the the hunt we're talking about the AEDU one, the core one. Okay, good, because I have a lot of things to say about the essential hunter. We know we'll get to that. Um, Marauder is for those who want to do the want to do um the two weapon stuff. With what is one is the speedy two weapon version. Um. Whereas Two Blade is the offensive one who had um who had one unfortunate build that had that was known as Kenshiro Orcus Slayer because of one <laughs> pow because of one power that would allow you to keep attacking as long as you kept hitting. What? I uh I love all of the the stories I've ever heard about 4e and each time i hear them i just wish i had gotten to play at the time that it was still in vogue mm -hmm. 
Oh. Damn it, Zan, am I going to have to drag you to my 40 table? No, because I'm not playing D&D anymore. Okay, that's it. I'm showing up to your house tomorrow. No, you're not. Uh, you you really? Okay, okay. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. There's there's a reason, Petals, that you do not want to show up to my door unannounced. It sounds so something a little like this. That's right. It's Ooh, a giant God. Pez dispenser. So Look, man, he's gonna feed you the biggest fucking Pez. You're gonna regret it. Your blood sugar is gonna spike. You're go gonna you're gonna get time. you're gonna get a a a, a, a medically induced nine millimeter lead injection. I just had a chemist describe a gun by saying it increased the lead density of the air to unsurvivable levels. <laughs> <laughs> I still like I still like the physics definition of a gun. It increases yeah, the yeah, lead sure. velocity to, un to, to unsurvivable <laughs> levels. No, 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 no. You don't get it. I'm not shooting this man in the head. I'm just giving him an amateur lobotomy. But with all with all that said, <laughs> for me personally, um, I wanted to put the ranger as an S. But the only thing that stops it is is the fact that when it came to the Animal Companion fantasy, it kind of drops the ball. So the Ranger, for me personally, that's going in the A. Okay, I can see that. If I, I recall correctly, a thing uh, about why the Beastmaster Rangers were never that good is because like Animal Companions have always been like a coin flip in terms of game balance. It is very dependent on the t on the type of animal, yes. But the reason why the reason why I think it dropped the ball is bec is because of the fact that it relies it relies you to either to either be doing a whole lot of a whole lot of flanking maneuvers, which, given the fact that you're essentially dealing with two character sheets at once, isn't always viable, or you're dealing with um ha with having to be an archer. While not having a lot of the powers that a pure archer build is going to have, so they have a worst of both worlds situation. To catch twenty-two, an unfortunate, an unfortunate event. Ironically, um, when we get to one of the essentials uh, druids, we'll actually be getting a much better look at a uh, viable companion uh, class. Yeah. Now, the next one is the is the rogue and the rogue Give is, me shit. <laughs> the, the rogue is the is dex is dex focused but it can it can get some use out of charisma or strength as a secondary is um, it dex as a god stat not as not as much as you'd think this time oh good because Dex as a god stat has been a thing since time immemorial, I swear to fucking god. Especially the way, defen especially the way defenses fighting. work. Um, dumping uh, dumping everything into Dex is not going to make you a t a um, a dodging machine. Since the since some um, especially especially when it comes to spells and some <laughs> non spell abilities, the other def the other defense the other um, defenses what was what were saving throws beforehand. Are gonna are going to play a factor. There's a very X versus Y system with um, combat. That's good to hear. Um, now, sneak. Now, um, of course, of now the, of course, there's the there. One of the one of the main things that they have is rogue tactics, which could a lot, which could, which is essentially their subclass feature. Um. On one hand, you have Artful Dodger, which get which boosts your AC versus opportunity attacks. Um, Brutal Scoundrel, which give which lets you do more damage with sneak attacks. So essentially, you ha essentially with those you have the Trickster Rogue and the Brawny Rogue. Um, Martial Power One added the Ruthless Ruffian tactic, so you can add the Mace and Club, so you can sneak attack with a club. Um, as as well, and um, that and that's for the that's for the cutthroat. You also have the aerialist one for the for the, for those who prefer using um, throwing weapons instead instead of getting in close, and want and want to do a whole lot of mobility. And martial power two introduced cunning sneak, 
for those who want to be even more stealthy than stealthy rogues are. As... So, you, from everything you're describing, it almost sounds like this rogue is going to be an S-monk. Not only that, but if you build it right, you have a way to do to deal damage with every single action. At Paragon level, you can do <laughs> you can do damage with Tumbling Strike or Low Slash as a minor action, Knockout with a standard, Two Weapon Opening Attack with a free action. Critical opportunity with moves or with moves to minors, and 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 um, bloodbath or deep dagger wound with standard with um, action point standard actions. <laughs> rogue, you'll never stop bleeding. <laughs> so rogues are an S. I love that. Not I love because, that. Are can they can they when it comes to when it comes to out and out damage. They are they're certainly outclassed by other strikers, but when it comes to having multiple different ways to chip, that's where that's where they shine. Rogues, they're always coming after your kids. Oh. <laughs> and everything else. It's not just your kidneys at that point. Now, next is the rune priest, which was which was set up as a divine healer. And the unfortunate, I'd say the unfortunate part was the fact that Rune Priest came out in Player's Handbook 3, which meant that it came out after Divine Power. Mm. Uh, this, me this meant that the variety of stuff that it could do was limited. But what I, do find, what I do find interesting is that with a lot of Rune Priest powers, you can either choose between the protection or destruction variant of it. Essentially, essentially, they're a they're a, they're a kind of divine leader that has a bit of stance dancing going about. Stance dancing. Um. That's what we call it. Their their big point of divergence is is their is their choice in runic artistry. You have divine word, which uh, which um allows you to add wisdom to your attacks if they miss you. But. But um, the problem is you'll mostly be using simple weapons, so it's a bit so unless you do the right build, it's a bit of a trap. Serene Blade gives you get, allows you to use military heavy blades while also having your wisdom determine AC, and you and every time you hit, you gain temporary hit points, scaling fr scaling from Wiz to Wiz plus five, and then Wiz plus ten depending on your tier. And Wrathful Hammer gives proficiency with mauls and military hammers. And you gain, and you get a um, con bonus to damage against an enemies that that hit you. Um, it's very, it's very much, a, it's more of a switch hitter than the than than say the cleric. But because of, because of the fact that there is some degree of traps and the fact that it's not exactly going to be user, it's not going going to be user friendly. There is the concept of rune use. But not in the same regard. So I would personally put um, the Rune Priest at a B. Like its effectiveness is really is really going to is really going to be determined on what's on the type of build that you do, and you're going to have to learn to play by its rules, which do, which um is going is going to be one of those your mileage may vary kind of things, which is why I'm putting it in the solid B category. Next, we you know how you know how I said that a lot of the magic stuff was taken by another class when it came to the ranger. That's where we get our next one, and one of the more infamous entries from Player's Handbook Three. That being the Seeker. I swear to God, they they better not have named it what I think they named it after. The Seeker is the Seeker is weird. They are they are they are a ranged centric build, like all all of their shit is mostly is mostly ranged stuff. They are a controller class, but they end up playing more like strikers. They um. When it comes when it comes to when it comes to their when it comes to their selections, it's not the greatest, but they do have the occasional useful power. It very much feels like a bunch of different trick arrows, even if it even if it's binding spirits to arrows. 
But for all intents and purposes, people, um, the analog that people use is Green Arrow or Hawkeye. Yeah. Sounds like a good analog, but honestly, like, that's kind of rad. I don't think ever, ever anybody play a Seeker in my games. Yeah, they're they're trying they're trying to fulfill the magical archer niche that the that the ranger that the ranger had in previous editions, but dumped. Um, I, scout I, um, scout as a class kind of filled that up. I remember uh, when were they introduced? It was like the better version of ranger. Yeah. Once a, once again, the pro the problem with the problem with the ranger is that it came out in not the ranger. The problem with the seeker is that it came out at the wrong time. Being being in Player's Handbook three kind of kind of made it kind of made it miss out on anything from Primal Power that it could have taken advantage of. So because yeah, it, uh, no Seeker is the same. Oh, sorry. There's not a there's not very there's not much in the way of variance. Even and to be honest, I'm putting them in as a C. They're they're very limited in the stuff that they are good at. And a lot of the stuff that they are good at is outshone by them by other classes, but they're not as bad as assassins. Yeah, yeah. Seekers and rune priests have the problem where they're just starved of options. Mm -hmm. Rune priests less so than seekers. It's more so that rune priests have better things that they have at base. They have like a sturdier base. Seeker. Whereas Seekers, it's just kind of um, shoot shit and uh, see what happens. Mm -hmm. oh. So you're saying that they are Kyle Rittenhouse. That's People fuck around and find out. That's as far as I'm going with that joke. <laughs> so you're going to execute that joke because it threatened you? I see how that goes. <laughs> fuck off. Uh... <laughs> He's only cutting he it off because he's black. Oh, God. <laughs> Time to walk it. away from this joke. Take the better part of Valor here. I'm going to stand our ground with this one, people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, leave it alone. Joel, thank you. <laughs> uh, I bet that's the first time uh, Monk's ever been tag teamed by two men. Only except in my dreams. Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> anyway, next we have the shaman. Who the shaman? The shaman is essentially a is essentially a primal leader that focuses more that essentially took all the summoning animal spirits and, and animal companion stuff that druids had and gave it to themselves. Um. Now the summoned animal is really fucking tough, and the, and um the their particular he, their particular healing mechanic kind of breaks kind of gets around the whole use a healing surge to heal thing. The the big well the one thing that I the one thing that I find very interesting with the shaman is the fact that. They can use the, they can use their summoned animal spirit as the point of origins for spells instead of themselves. So you can have you can have that animal spirit out at out at range and still do, and still have it be the fo the focus of a close burst spell instead of the close burst spell um, affecting where you are. That sounds like fun. Um, the the big, the I'd say, I'd say the bi I'd say the big problem is that in fluff they have the whole, they don't need to seek adventure. They but they end up getting pulled into trouble, which there's only, which kind of bottlenecks the kind of stories you can tell. Yeah, um, I think there's always the problem where if you have a class where part of its role play gimmick is that it doesn't do it, that's kind of a bad thing. Yeah, for me. I would I would say that I would say shamans are very much a B. They would have been they would have been an A, but it's one of those classes that demands that demands a certain level of understanding of how it works. Not not, not necessarily foreknowledge or something like that, but more of the fact that it's got it's got a specific kit 
it's got a specific kit, a specific playstyle in mind, and it's something that you have to adapt to. It's a little too limited. It's not as versatile as some of the more uh, impressive ones. Yeah. Next one. It's also is... pretty funny. If, um... Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was gonna. It's kind of. It can be kind of funny in role play when you have like a pet from your theme or whatever. It's like a bear, and then you have your spirit animal be a bear, and you can be like, "Oh yeah, that's this bear's father." Mm -hmm. That always has some fun bits to it. Now, next is the sorcerer. And um, apparently apparently, the reason sorcerers were not in the first player's handbook was they wanted to come up with a way to, ma to, make it, um, to make it more distinct, especially since they couldn't fall back on the whole, oh, you don't have to prep your spells thing that, th thing that they've used in the past. Now, oh, the, the sorcerer, the sorcerer is, is meant is meant to be a more in, a more innate caster and they are basically evokers <laughs> that the th they li they like doing elemental damage involving all of the elements sometimes multiple types at the same time and the, those sluts <laughs> and because of that they they tend they tend to be considered the halfway point between wizards and warlocks, um, but they but they also decide to distinguish even further where the magic comes from instead of the instead of that vague oh you may have learned you may have learned it from dragons or something like that. Um, instead, we you have four different type four different types of sorcerers that were in, that were put in. Um, wild magic. Where they can randomly gain either either a boost to AC, a, fr a free saving throw, maybe gain energy resistance, that and the energy type would change randomly, could slide could could slide targets around on nat twenties. Um, they ba it base I wouldn't exactly call it viable, but it certainly fits the fantasy of a wild mage. Um, dragon mages are ener are energy resistances, and and be and um because of the fact that their that the core stat for their AC is a little bit is a little bit varied and they get more AC when they're when they're bloodied they certainly have a a cert a good amount of variety storm mages are resistant to thunder and lightning damage and they and they get to put they get to push their target or even or even fly in some cases unfortunately they never fucking stop playing that ACDC song so they are pretty insufferable <laughs> Uh, nah, nah, nah. Yeah, we get it. We get your shtick, man. Mm -hmm. Continue. Um, cosmic cosmic sorcerers again ha again have a degree of a degree of variety and um, can choose the planes that they're aligned with during a during a rest, which grants them a special bonus. Um, if you're aligned with the sun, you get cold <laughs> resistance and you inflict fire and radiant damage on nearby enemies. Moon grants psychic resistance and gives and gives you um a AC bonus based on how many enemies are adjacent to you. Stars grants radiant resistance and you can teleport as a free reaction anytime someone misses. And you can you can choose to you can choose to go to the next phase. Um every anytime you can anytime you cast a daily. Although, although when you get bloodied, you're forced to switch. So I'd say I'd say the fact that it focuses on the whole raw power thing, the, for lack of a better term, phenomenal cosmic power, the, f in terms of in terms of fitting the fantasy of 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 the casty sorcerer, who is who doesn't cast as thirteenth age says doesn't cast spells as much as they uncork it. I think I think the sorcerer is an S. An S because it is phenomenal cosmic power instead of semi phenomenal nearly cosmic power. Mm -hmm. Ooh, A plus eleven from nineteen ninety two reference. I love that movie. Yep. I, I I love the cartoon series it was based on that popularized that phrase. Mm -hmm. oh. The now, sorcerer just blows you up. Yeah, you go boom. 
honestly, like it was a very played class in my games. Like it, it does what it says on the tin. It does it well. Like you get to be cool. That's that's all I want from a class. That's all I, most of my players wanted for a class. I um, that... I used sorcerers a lot, and I used I used a tactic that I would that I'd like to call um, dirty lightning. You know, throwing around fire and electricity a lot. That's not really dirty lightning. That's just kind of lightning by science. Dirty lightning. Whenever I, I just, played I was... a sorcerer, I would just I, I just did nothing but spam blazing starfall, and that's all I did. All day, every day. <laughs> Placing Starfall sounds now, like the name of a hair glam band. Hair metal glam band. Now, next... New is... Blazing Starfall. Door to your heart. Only on KWA, the heart. Now, opening for the darkness, Blazing Starfall. <laughs> now, next is Sword Mages. Which was exclusive to the Forgotten Realms players players handbook, um, and and were are instead were arcane defenders. Then the the funny thing is is that is that the fluff implies that Eladrins invented invented um the sword mage fighting style, but Eladrins are actually the are actually one of the worst classes to pick for be, for being a sword mage. Innovating something Mostly because it just kind of that. doubles down on everything a sword mate does. I think that's a good point there, Joel. Just because you invented it doesn't mean you're good at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Guess what? laughs> yeah, they they're not. They are mainly going to rely on are rely on a on a one handed on a one handed weapon with with class features that give them some AC bonuses since they can't use a shield. Um, they do, they do have, and they do have some, de some decent class features in that. A lot of it stems from their Sword Mage Aegis, which is basically their marking ability. You have, you have, um, you have three, ver you have three versions of it. One of them from Arcane Power, the Aegis of Assault, um, everyone's personal favorite, where you can teleport to the assailant and make a free attack. The Aegis of Shielding re reduces the reduces the damage that the ally takes, and Ensnarement instead teleports the attacker to to you and makes them vulnerable to when you next attack them. I, I I'm I'm sorry. Did he just make this the Cold Steel the Hedgehog reference that I made when we were looking at that one rogue archetype during Heavens and Heresies? Yes, he did. I did. It's it's better with Heavens and Heresies because it's actually the name of the fucking feature. Oh <laughs> Nothing <God>. personal, kid. <laughs> Tanner is a shitlord and I love him. <laughs> so oh, that's besides Jesus the point. Christ. Yeah. <laughs> better put Nothing Personal Kids somewhere in the Edgelord chapter of my game. Now, <laughs> the sword be in there. Or, you, mark my fucking words. Yeah. The sword bond feature is is large is largely fluff or a way to or a way to really piss off your DM, since they since it is, they essentially bond with a sword. They can rebroke they can rebuild the sword if it's if it's broken, or they can summon it to their hand if it's within a certain distance, and that distance is pretty damn far. There's not a whole lot of powers that take advantage of this, but it but it could be it it probably could it's probably could be used for some fluff moments or or you could do or you could um you could do so, you could do something that is probably going to get your gm pissed off sell off the sword then use sword bond to call it back to me my blade <laughs> i am um, no refunds just run all, all i all i hear is is uh this is a shard blade T tell me you know about shard blades without telling me you know about shard blades <laughs> I That's what this feels like to me. I don't think I don't think you could. Um, I don't. I don't think you, there is a casting time of ten heartbeats. I mean, One ten heartbeats. The uh, character I ever played was a uh, hybrid uh, warlock sword mage. Mm -hmm. no. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if if ten heartbeats is fast or slow. So. Be. But um, for but for the most part, a lot a lot of people will take 
it, one feat that's almost that's almost a necessity to t to take for sword mages was intelligent blade master, since it meant that their melee attacks and opportunity attacks would use intelligence instead of strength. It is it is the purest it is the purest form of the gish feel. Um, gish. That phrase is never going to be not funny to me. When I th when I think of something hitting a wall of razors and that's like the sound that happens gish it's a verb less than a less than a description mm -hmm. you just got gished yeah, that's, that, sound, <laughs> that sounds like a lame version of saying you got you got punked lame it has magic and swords <laughs> Uh, I that am be, eternally amused. That being said, I'd say I'd I'd say per, I'd say personally the so, the sword the sword mage is I'd say a B. It is very good it is very good at the at the at this one specific thing that that it is that it's going to be good at, um, but but it does have a all roads lead to Rome kind of thing going on. Especially, especially, especially since the fact the fact that the fact that it needs to have one hand free for the casting part of things does does limit some does limit some of the kit that you can bring out. So no um no two no great sword sword mage for you. Yeah, sword mages are very much one of the classes where the devs they wanted you to do this very specific thing. You will do this one thing, and you will like it. I will say that I do. I do like the sword mage. I do like the sword mage better in um, in the thir in the thirteenth age um third party expansion that they were in um, the dar the dark paths duology, which incidentally I which incidentally, um, if you look back in the archives, you'll see that I did an interview with the guy behind that project, um. <laughs> One more for the archives. Now, next is the warden. No, it is not gray, and they do not ride griffins. Nor do th well, nor do, they run, nor do they run prison. Nor do they run prisons. The warden is ba is basically is basically the, is basically the aggressive defender of nature, which has prompted some people to make the joke that um. Ted Turner in Robot Chicken was a warden. Captain Planet! Captain Planet! Yeah, that was a great sketch. Protect the environment, or I'll fucking kill you! <laughs> Captain Planet! Please, 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 I've signed, I've signed it, let me go now! Okay. <sighs> oh. <sighs> they are primal defenders. They um, they are the people who want who want to do paladin, but also want to have some AOE stuff and some shape shifting. The the there are two main mechanics that they tend to have. One of them is font of life, so you can roll a saving throw at the start of a turn as well as the end. So de so you have a whole, you have a lot more chances to get rid of debuffs. Um, Nature's wrath, which is its marking po which is its marking power. Which has two default um, abilities: Warden's Fury, which is a at-will interrupt that attacks a a marked enemy nearby who targets anyone but you, and makes them grant combat advantage to all allies if you actually hit them. And Warden's Grasp, a re a reaction that sli that slides them with it, that slides a marked enemy within f within five spaces that attacks someone besides you and renders them slowed. So you essentially throw vines at them, going, "Where do you think you're going?" Get over here. <laughs> um, the subclass feature is is Guardian Might, which put which puts them into one of two categories based on what their secondary stat is. Um, since wardens are gonna want strength, it's either it's either um they, they you're either gonna, you're gonna have them in two forms, either Con wardens, 
or Wiz Wardens, which, each of which have um, two variants. Con Wardens, you can either pick Earth Strength or Stormheart. Um, so, so Earth Strength is going to give you is going to make you more tanky than you already are, because it doubles your con bonus whenever you use Second Wind. Stormheart is a little bit more controlling because that second wind lets you shift around enemies nearby you and slowing it and slowing any enemies you've marked. Um, Wisdom Wardens, you either have Life Spirit or Wild Blood. Life Spirit is a bit more of a supporter, and so you can have an ally spend whenever you use second wind, you can have an ally spend a healing surge. And a lot of the powers associated with Life Spirit grant um Grant either defensive boosts or temporary hit points. Wild Blood is an alternative pure defender by making your marks um, add whiz to all penalties when using Second Wind. Um, and the the thing the funny thing is is that intel is that um. Intelligence and dexterity for wardens are almost dump stats. Intelligence is dead weight because it's not going it's not going to help it's not going to help much and the only thing that the only thing that dex is going to help is initiative. Although you can you can mess around that with feats, although some some say that um I've I've seen some say that the earth strength build is 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 the same as any other defenders, but the thing, the thing is, is that they are they are meant to be the crowd control ones. So they, so anytime that they, anytime that they get in the thick of it, they're going to be at their best instead of focusing on one enemy at a time. A lot of times. So be that be that being said, the the idea the idea of of this of this net of this pit of this pissed essentially a pissed off druid who decided to make weapons and armor out of out of nature to fuck things up. Um, there's not a whole lot of equivalents for it because when we think of druids in pop culture, you know exactly where where that goes. Druid. But the trees, man. But, but just the just the strength of the just the strength of what it's of what it's doing and the variety and how you can do it. I think wardens are an S. Oh yeah, wardens are one of the best uh, primal classes in four e. Mm -hmm. Now next is you're a walking mountain, and you do exactly that. Mm -hmm. I believe, no, I was just saying. You're a I believe mountain. the technical term Zan is. Is um built like a brick shit house. Yes, built like a. Brick Every time I hear the house. phrase "brick shit house," I think of a uh, Mad Bull Thirty Four. You think of what? Post. Mad Bull Thirty Four. Okay. So, next is warlocks, which. Warlocks were in 3.5, and they were in Pathfinder, and they sucked in both cases. Um, warlocks were actually actually Wait, fairly. Wait, no, wasn't wasn't the warlock um, wasn't the warlock replaced by the uh, witch in uh, Pathfinder? Yeah, kind kind of the. Cause I know, like I remember, I know they uh. I know, like warlocks weren't OGL, so Pathfinder didn't include them. So. Yeah, they were in occult adventures with the kineticists to a, in a mechanical sense. Um, but that was that was more of an element that was more of a element bender than anything else. Um, warlocks, yeah, and the kineticist is like a whole different can of worms. Yeah, warlocks in three point five were were essentially. Essentially a poor man, essentially a poor man's blaster. But really, if you if you wanted to be a blast, if you wanted to be a blaster caster in three point five, you'd probably be picking sorcerer more than you would warlock or wizard, just because of the amount of fucking spells you could get. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, yeah. I mean. Yeah, Eldric Eldric's blast is is nice of, is nice of them, but the but the <laughs> but they um 
it's a case where, it's a case where they're they can do warlocks in 3.5 could do a few things pretty well but they didn't have enough to be to um compete especially since their damage is static and there's not a whole lot of options to improve it uh -huh. now warlocks in um in fourth edition were actually fairly popular I'd say I'd say I'd say they were more popular than warlocks are in fifth edition. Which is saying something, considering warlocks are like one of the most used caster classes in fifth. Most, mostly because they mostly because they're a caster class that actually has actually has something that doesn't rely on you using that concentration bullshit. Well, that and the fact that you can basically turn them into frontline tanks using a few invocations and taking the uh, pact of the fiend. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, Warlocks in 5th edition have something that is quite rare in 5th edition, a customization. Yeah. Now, the f I think I'd I'd say the, mo the mo there were two um there were two race class combinations that were very popular in 4th edition. One of them was the Dragonborn Paladin, the other was the Tiefling Warlock. And I've talked about this in the past, and I might I might bring this up again if we ever do this for races. But tieflings in fourth edition, I can I consider it to be the best interpretation of them because it isn't edge lord shit. Like for in a lot of times, tieflings are just you're half demon, which is okay and all, but it's not all that interesting either. In fourth edition, the mo the motif was you were you were not one of your parents wasn't a demon, but rather one of your ancestors made a pact with a demon, and and that and your bloodline is cursed ever since. With and with with a lot of the art that was given for tieflings, there's a very almost gypsy vibe to how they present themselves. And for me personally, I find that I find that presents a whole lot more story opportunities. I mean, yeah, you could you could feasibly make um, that that particular thing in th in editions past and future, but at that but at that point there there isn't really you're you're putting in that foundation yourself. It's not something that's built around that that's being built around. Uh huh. Now, the the whole th the whole thing with war the whole thing with warlocks is that they were a, they were a striker who who um who had who was a master of curses. They'd cur they'd curse and then re and then reap the and then reap those who they had cursed and have a bit of stealthiness since shadow walk can grant you concealment until the end of your next turn. On any turn in which you move at least three squares. Now, their their subclass feature is very determined, very determinant on their pact. And inter int and interestingly, and something that five E wouldn't do at Paragon tier, you can take a feat called Twofold Pack, so you get a second patron, and grant and get its cantrip and its pact boons as well as well. And whenever you kill a cursed enemy, you can pick which boon you're going to benefit from. So, you know, you've got... Joke's options. on you, Satan. I've already sold my soul to Cthulhu. Pretty much. <laughs> so you have the Fey Pact, i.e. you made a Fey with an Arch Fey or a really strong Fey. So they, so a whole lot of um, glamour magic and some, and some nature magic as well. Basically, Titania really liked you, so she told you... Um... Go go play tricks on people. Mm -hmm. um, and as a side note, making a deal with Faye is a very bad idea. Uh, depends on the Faye. Yeah, there. Whenever, whenever, whenever a creature cursed drops to zero HP, they can teleport three squares. Um, Infernal Pact is self-explanatory, and is all about <laughs> is all about fire and more fire. You made a deal with something on the abyssal plane. Good and job. It's, it's packed boon grants you temporary HP. 
The Star Pact is where things get weird and where you have arguably fourth edition's answer to the to the um to the mad problem. Obviously the Star Pact is your is um Cthulhu. Or rather the Cthulhu mythos. Certain stars are giant aberrations which can best, which can bestow powers. Um Upon thee the power to destroy your enemies. But the the way now grant now grant granted some of the, some of them are some of them are more as are more astrology and some of them are are going full are going full on the are full on horror things. Uh, full on the color from mm-hmm. space. Yeah, <clears throat> but. Their their partic- their particular their particular boon is allows gives you a plus one bonus to one d twenty roll of your choice made before the end of your next turn. It stacks, but it only remains usable for one turn. And a lot of to and the problem the problem is a lot of the a lot of the power a lot of the powers that are tied to Star Pact are. Ver- are uh, not are not as are not as universal when it comes to what stat that they u- that they utilize, which is the reason wh- which is the reason why Star yeah, there's, warlocks kind of yeah, they actually the have support for um, yeah because they like their powers are split between charisma and constitution. Now, in, now, and while you know warlocks and Fury could have take powers that were from other packs, they didn't get the riders, mm-hmm. which is where a lot of like Fury stuff comes from. Yeah. Now, Forgotten Realms introduced the Dark Pact, i.e., i.e. the spirits native to the Underdark. So a whole lot of a whole lot of poison, madness, all all the stuff that Loth loves. Um. Some of them, some of them can give you upgrades if you do damage to your allies, which is a very drow thing. And but even with that, they're they're on the beefy end of things. The I'd say I the and the a dark packed warlock leans a little bit into a defender because of how um, dark Sp- dark spiral aura works. Its value gets one point every time a cursed creature it is killed, and you can use that as an interrupt when an enemy makes a melee or ranged attack against you, inflicting a de- inflicting um, psychic psychic a- and necrotic damage per p- per point in that in that aura. And if that damage is less than twelve, your aura drops to zero. If you do more than twelve, you can have the damage, and your aura just drops to one. And of course, it resets when you take a short rest. So it is kind of defender y. Um, Dark Sun introduced the Sorcerer King's Pact to tr- to try and to try and bring back AD and D's Templar. Um, the which was which was which was a weird mix of kind of warlock and kind of psychic. It ha- it had a resource no- known as Felmite that could be spent when casting certain spells in order to trigger upgraded effects. Um, it was a bit it was a bit controversial, to say the least. Even th- even though it's gonna recharge like crazy because you're supposed to be cursing if you're playing a warlock. Although, having an alliance with the Sorcerer King, the villains of Dark Sun. Is gonna leave a sour taste in people's mouths, but then again, those are probably the same people who are cre- who are saying, "I want to play a black guard." A black guard. Got them black guard. And weirdly enough, Sorcerer King Warlocks are kind of interesting from an optimization perspective because they have this feat. It's fucking ridiculous. You just get to add a one d eight to all your mas- basic uh, melee attacks forever. It's fucking stupid. Yeah. Although you you stack that with cur- you stack that with curses and you make people's lives interesting, but weirdly enough, in what was mostly an essentials book, 
and the Heroes of the Elemental Chaos, they added in the Elemental Pack for Core Warlocks. Which is, is basically you is basically you making a pact with something from the Elemental Chaos. Um, it's a little bit it's a little bit wild mage. Um, it gives you affinity to either acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder, which is determined randomly every time you complete a rest. And you can change you can ch much like much like the elemental sorcerers, you can change that when using second wind. When you you when um. You can you can also use this to force certain powers to to deal the to deal the damage type of your affinity. So if you if you use a power that would normally do acid damage, you can and you have lightning affinity. Well, now it's doing lightning damage. Um, it's it's boon had it that every whenever you drop a cursed victim, everyone you you place your Everyone you place your curse on grants is get get some vulnerability to whatever damage type you have affinity with. So it's certainly in, it's certainly interesting. Um, there. Yeah, you can just completely destroy certain creatures yeah. and monsters in the game just by stacking vulnerabilities. Oh, and I just realized I forgot about the vestige pact. Which was a reincarnation yeah, of the th third edition binder. I I like. Although the concept sadly, of... we'll see the massacred binder later on. I I liked the concept of of ves of um, vestiges, Large, largely because there was a whole lot of a whole lot of narrative co conceptualization of drawing mm -hmm. upon the powers of dead gods. And it it also it also made them a bit of a stance dancer, so I think because of the sheer variety, even even with the issues that star packed warlocks have, I think warlocks are an S. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. fourth was probably the best edition for warlocks. Mm -hmm. Just because, simply because of all this, all the you have you have the you have the motif of the of the pact, and you have that particular fantasy well as best as they can do because. A lot that whole pact fantasy is is far is far of much of a narrative thing, and D and D D and D has never had narrative mechanics, which is why, which is why which is why I find it funny when people say that there was that there are better narrative elements in certain editions. No, there no there weren't. Those are things that you put on it. I think that's the reason why the I've never put too much stock in the whole rulings not rules um philosophy. But Next we have the warlord and I'm going Yay. I am go I'm going to skip right past the bullshit. Warlords are an S. Yeah. I think warlords the fucking rule. I think the fact that since date since 5th edition came out, people have been demanding for the longest time to have a war <laughs> to, 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 have a an ex to have an equivalent and no, battle minds are not warlords. No, fighters from heavens and heresies are warlords. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Am I shilling Tanner's work too much? Well, some someone's got it, so it may as well be us. I mean, is there such a thing as too much? Just like too much Daka, I don't think you can shill heavens yeah. and heresies enough. But the war, the warlord, this concept of a martial leader, was to some very to some very scub. Although the reasons were were um stupid. The whole idea with the warlord is essentially the ba is essentially the frontline battlefield commander. The the kind of the kind of person who is the, who is the gen who is the tactical genius who fights on the front lines with his men. He is not a man who will scream at the top of his lungs, "I am the clit commander." <laughs> oh. The the joke needed to be made. Yeah, but um, some someone had said once a barbarian hits you with his axe, a warlord hits you with his barbarian. Barbarian, and, kill that man! Yes, sir. I love it. And um, the the funny thing is that the the two the two primary um builds were 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 in the were um in the form of a Brava presence, which. 
which gr which grants which granted um incre which granted some attack options and the insightful presence which was more of which is more of a a defense as well as some free healing um resourceful presence was a bit more was a bit more situational and skirmishing presence let you move people around like chess pieces and tactical presence j let let you have everybody hit harder um but the funny thing is, is that the 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 um ins the brava and tactical warlords were the two were the two most common builds at the at the start and prompted a bit of a meme of saying you're either lelouch or you're kamina It's um, <laughs> it's we were just it's, pausing for the applause, people. <laughs> <laughs> it's fairly it's fairly accurate. Um, I would say that the, that one of those leaders is more effective than the other, but then I would get a lot of hatred from one or the other side of Mecca. I'll let you decide which leader I'm advocating for, but both of you fucking sides can hate me all you want. <laughs> You're. Nah, you're you're shit, Lord. You're definitely talking about Lelouch. He didn't say that. You did. That's your assumption. I uh, I love the fuck out of Gurren Lagann, and I love the fuck out of uh, <laughs> fucking Code Geass. So, although the only time I've ever played a warlord, I flavored it as Teddy Roosevelt. Fucking mm. Christ, that good works. Choice. Yeah, good choice. Um. <laughs> Oh, what's this? I've been shot. Uh, I, well, I can still finish my speech. And make fun of you for being a pissant not killing me with your shot while making my speech. That's what Teddy <laughs> Roosevelt did. Mm -hmm. God, I love that, man. Uh, well, a lot of a lot of the a lot of the charismatic warlords that or or charismatic generals that you see in the that you see in the Warriors series, um, Sao Tso especially would fit the warlord archetype, or even even just even just charismatic fighters who who will who will who will rally whole troops like say, like say William Wallace are still are still go are still going to count under the warlord archetype or um ooh yeah this one's a good one uh if we're still talking Musou games mm, Hyrule Warriors Ganondorf is absolutely a warlord type <laughs> One that hits like a truck, but yes. No one said a warlord can't be powerful. In fact, leading by example is the best way to lead. Mm -hmm. I would follow you to the end of Hyrule Ganondorf. Um. And follow me to the depths of hell! Alright, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> now, the, I want to be the, a pig demon. The last of the core classes that we have is the wizard. Not to be confused with the wiz from Discworld. And not, and not to be confused with the Wiz or the Power Glove because it's so bad. It's so bad. Now, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of people argue that the that the wizard that the wizard in Fourth Edition is just an evoker. This is not true. Sorcerers are evokers. We've made that. We've made that clear. But. The the main th the main thing the main thing that differentiated a wizard is that they got more they got more utilities and daily powers than than anybody else, but they had to store them in their spell book. Although you could you could switch those you could switch out those memorized spells. Um, but a, a lot of a lot of their a lot of their um a lot of their a lot of their subtypes are determinants on the on the implement that they, that they utilize essentially much in the same way that a fighter is supposed to is supposed to be specialized in a certain type of weapon a wizard was supposed to be specialized in certain implements that be that being so you have things like the orb of imposition the staff of defense the wand of accuracy and so and so on even tomes were considered a um a implement now, for me, is that fire? Is that fire emblem mages I hear in the background? <laughs> for me personally, I remember. I remember when we were when we were discussing the rebuilding, um, reconstructing D um, D and D classes, 
the big problem that the wizard has had is kind of is kind of a spin on the problem that the fighter has in the fact that aside from the, aside from them doing this bro doing this broad thing they don't have they don't have a whole lot to fall back on like the reason why the wizards are the worst class are the worst casting class in 5th edition is that the, is is that they all they get is more casting and a lot of that more casting involves concentration rules, which, as we've established, are bullshit. Concentration, like concentration rules. Uh... <sighs> you live in the U.S. Rules. You live really? in the U.S. Oh, yeah. where you are yeah. allowed to be wrong. <laughs> I have a constitutionally printed right to be stupid. Yes, you do. It doesn't make us My any... problem with concentration rules is that you have to make a saving throw. No, not not in the five the idea of the idea of doing a saving throw for concentration, I would actually prefer that. Because at the very least you're doing something. The problem that I have with concentration in um 5e as Ash had established is that it makes haste a necessity of a spell to pick the first chance you get. Yes. Because all because you have to spend your whole action concentrating. And remember what we talked about the whole maintaining is not interesting? This is where you have that problem. Yes. That's true. Yeah, it, like it makes sense action economy wise, but it kind of sucks if you can't do anything on your turn but the thing that you should already be doing. You know? I'm going to I'm going to you're not even hitting a button. You're not even rolling a die. You're just like well, I continue to do the same thing. It continues to happen. Oh. Well, is maintaining fact... a spell in fifth edition a free action though? No, no. I don't know. It's been a while since I've read the fifth edition rules. But uh, not to mention the fact that in a lot of uh, a lot of fiction, powerful wizards of varying degrees can do such things as concentrate on multiple spells and maintain them while casting certain instantaneous spells at the same time, or can even multicast. If you can only concentrate on one spell as, as any caster, even at the highest levels, you're, f you're failing the class fantasy of big, bad, powerful magic man who make you scare, because now you have fireballs, icicles, and meteors coming at you. Now, the other, the other, um, the other, the other approach, the narrative approach when it comes to the wizard is that they're supposed to be the studious spellcaster. You know, the stereotype of the wizard up in his tower surrounded by more books than I have. I have I opened every book in this tower, poured over every tome, and in doing so... And yet peered into the very laws of this world, and I will tear you apart with them! That is a wizard. Yeah. And yet I will still fold like a grease-covered napkin if a goblin stabs me! No wizard worth his salt would ever do that. Mage armor. <laughs> but the... Uh, and uh, apparently, apparently the reason why the whole AEDU was a thing was they found the idea of a wizard who casts a few spells and then high and then hides behind the beefy boys to be boring which is which is true mm -hmm. and then they then they realized wait we can use this to give everybody f cool stuff to do and thus AEDU was born now i'd s the big the big problem with the big problem when it comes to wizards for me personally is that for the longest time they were they were just the spellcaster if you wanted to use magic, you picked wizard. But when other spellcasting classes that had th that did spellcasting and their own unique things started coming about, the wizard started to started to lose its identity because it didn't it didn't ri it should have doubled down on the whole on the whole studiousness thing, but it didn't. In fact, I, in fact, I would I would argue that if there's any cl if there's any class that should have that if you're going to give them meta magic exclusively, it should be the wizard and not the sorcerer. Oh. And yeah, there's the argument that they that they can cast more spells than anyone else. That was the arg that's the argument in fourth. That's been the argument in fifth. It was the argument in third. 
the big problem is... is that is that it is is that it's largely the same as the whole oh the fighter can use any weapon. Yeah, you get more, but it's still more of the same. It's still more of the same. You're not really you're not really doing anything to establish that identity. Um, it's the whole second verse, same as the first, but you know, not fun. Now, <clears throat> because because of that. Honestly, I would put wizards at a B. They are still they're, they're still very they're still very they're still be they're still able to do a lot of really good things, but it but it is going to be dependent on your choice of build, and the studious eh, their class features don't really um don't really fit that whole studiousness that we're t that we've talked about even the. Even the implement mastery thing is something you think would be better served by an artificer. Yes. the the big pro The big problem is that wi is that wizards need the wizards need a identity. And I, I, I um, I'm actually tempted to bring up Thirteenth Age in this regard because of because of the fact that. You have you have some you you have a bit you have some spells that wiz that wizards have that have the chain effect, i.e., you can hit another eligible target as long as you keep hitting, and some of them that and some of their encounter spells that are called cyclic, i.e., when the escalation die is on an even, and you ca and you cast an in you cast a cyclic encounter power, it doesn't exhaust. So with th with those two, you have you have you have the imp you have the implication that the wizard is going to be casting a variety of spells in order to spell cast more efficiently. But yeah, monk, I think you were really uh, hitting it on the head earlier. Wizard's identity basically just boils down to I'm a wizard, wizard, a wizard, wizard, a wizard man. Electric finger, nails, and that's it. Like if they if they had some stuff that um that further went that further went into the stu the studiousness then maybe I then maybe I could go with that even even Warhammer Wizards kind of have that without with the with all the different spells that they have with the hyper focus on one on one path yeah but Warhammer Wizards uh, explode if they cast their magic wrong <laughs> well there, there there certainly is that. But that co that covers all of the all of the core ones. Now we get to now we get to the essentials one. And I want to say I want to say this straight out. Essentials was the canary in the coal mine, not just for the eventual end of fourth edition, but also a lot of a lot of the design problems I would see in fifth edition. Mm. This is where you this is where you started to see the the lack of variety. This is where you started to see the attempt to try and appease um, fans of fans of older editions, especially um, especially pre three E editions. And oh, and this is and a lot of the, a lot of the essentials classes fit in fit into this whole thing of of not having a whole lot of not having a whole lot of variety and. Compa and compared to their counterparts, not being as good. We start this off with the ber with the um, berserker. Who is not as good as his barbarian counterpart. Now, the ber now first off, let me let me get the let me get the bad joke out of the way. My love for you is like a truck berserker. Would you like to make king fuck berserker? <laughs> berserker was introduced in Heroes of the Feywild and was trying to be was trying to be a was first off a martial class and halfway between a striker and defender instead of a pure striker like the barbarian. It dro it it dropped it, it dropped a lot of the a lot of the rages to focus on a bunch of mundane attacks and basically do all the same stuff that barbarians could do, especially since 
the whole point of Rage Strike was to was to appease those who didn't want to deal with the rage stances that um that bar that um barbarians had. <clears throat> so because of that <clears throat> and because of and because of the lack of variety within within it, due to it being an essentials class, Berserker I'd say is a C. It's not bad, but it is wholly outclassed. It's just so pointless. Bear Zarker. Yeah, you're you're gonna hear you're gonna hear the you're gonna hear it be, you're gonna hear pointless quite a quite a bit. You know, things that don't have a point mm -hmm. tend to be pointless. I mean, okay, you okay, you get a you start out with getting a Heartland feature every right? minute, every sixty seconds in Africa, a minute passes. I mean, yeah, there's a, there's a few there's a few nice features that you get that you that you get that you get. Although but a lot but it's not it's not all of that it, it's not all of that interesting. Interesting. And So so the next the next one on the list is the Essentials version of the assassin, the executioner, which somehow. But, Go ahead. but does but does he live in a mega city and does he wear a really cool helmet that blocks out the entire upper half of his face? Mm -hmm. Um, it and the executioner kept executioner's strike, but also but also gained access to poisons. Some equivalent to bit to daily powers, um, and the and the ability to insta kill things that put you below a certain threshold. But the but um, this one, but to be quite honest, the the execution while the, while the other essentials classes have some degree of choice, the executioner. Had e had even less than that low bar, so much like its big brother, the assassin, the executioner is a D. Who'd we lose? Um, I think we Joel. lost Joel. I oh, Joel probably had to. Yeah. It's probably getting too late for him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um. For what it's worth, at the end of this, I'm gonna sc I'm going to screen cap the final t the final tier list. Uh -huh. Um. But next uh, next up on the list we have the scald, basically the essentials version of a bard. Uh -huh. And ah yes the <gasps> bard. This is basically for. This is basically for those who who thought that their bar who thought that their bards were were too fightery and needed to be more castery. <sighs> to be to be quite honest, I think that I think that's missing the point since the bard is supposed to be a jack of many trades. So, ha and while they while they do have while they do have some. Melee stuff like like with deceptive duelist. The f the fact of the fact of the matter is is that is that a lot a lot of their a lot of their stuff just isn't get just isn't going to be all that interesting. It's a lot of the boring. essentials classes have the problem. It's like it's like the parent class, but worse. They're, so. But but even with that, I'd say the scald is a C. Like it's it's. We're not... finally going to populate the lower half of this tier list. Yeah. So, next up we have the war priest, basically the essentials version of the cleric. Let me see your war face. War. What is it good for? 
so the th the idea the idea was to make a simpler version of the cleric which uh, and for new for newbie players by essentially killing off the AEDU system it did so, uh, it did not succeed yeah now side note for all all people that might be watching this um Simple does not necessarily mean bad. We have seen simple be good in plenty of other things. Mm. It's just that this did not work. Yeah. This time. Now, the ch the um, first off, there is a whole lot more limitation when it came to channel divinity. the The domains lo the domains also locked you into using a single set of powers, with your only non-domain choice at level at level one being what daily you pick. And from that point on, you get the same handful of choices at later levels, except that encounter powers are locked by domain while granting new domain features at 5th and 10th. And it gain, instead of a paragon path, it gets class features stemming from your domain. Essentially, that, that whole thing of how, your, of how your choice of domain is the whole, is the whole of, your, um, of your subclass in 5th edition is what you have with the with the war priest. And because because of how pigeonholed it is D. I don't th I don't think there's an there's an argument for that here. What's what's funny is that even with that pigeonholing mindset in mind for 5th edition, they somehow managed to trip into a a cleric that is modeled after the war priest better than the war priest. Um in such a way that Codzilla has written has risen again, except now it's Cowzilla. Mm -hmm. um, I look for I look forward to hearing your explanation at, onto that tomorrow. <laughs> so with the puppets full of grimaces and a terrible sound, he pulls the spinning high tension wires down. So every time I hear Codzilla, I can just I can only think of Blue Oyster Cult. Oh, there are wor there are worse things to be stuck in your head. Um. So the next like Madonna two, music. The next two are are the are the essentials classes that the druid was split into. The first of these being the protector, who is meant to be is meant to be a is meant to be a druid variant, but thematically has more in common with the shaman. <laughs> Essentially, is the druid who wants to do the whole nature mage thing. And instead, instead it t instead it transforms a singular power into its entire daily power arsenal. Summon ally basically is their only daily power, which just gets more uses per day instead of letting you learn more daily powers. And the cr and it upgrades the creatures that you can that you can summon. Um. It's not as it's not as gimped as the war priest, but it is lacking in it is lacking in power. Um, it is worth noting there is like a feat you can take to swap uh, out uh, uses of some na natural ally for uh, druid dailies. That's a bandage, though. Yeah, that's treating yeah, the symptom and not the cause. But the the big problem is that you only get one. At will, unless you're, unless you're, unless you're human. a human, obviously, <laughs> Jinx. But yeah, the bit the. I mean, you you have you have the whole thing of primal of primal attunement, but all the but, but even but that's a cold cold comfort. <laughs> you're. Mostly get you're mostly gonna be you're mostly get you're mostly gonna have a very a very limited a very limited array of um, options and for th for that reason okay why is it not okay there we go I'd say protector druid is a D now. The of the other half of the split with Druid is the Sentinel, which was again was supposed to be a 
simplified take. And it doesn't elaborate why they're different to normal druids. But supposedly they do less of the shape-shifting and more of the spell-casting. And have an animal companion, so they're trying to be... They're trying to be 3rd edition druids. They gain, they do gain a combined a combined attack thing, so they technically have a better use of their animal companion compared to the um, animal companion ranger. But the but for but for me, it's still not, it's not quite good enough. It's better than a protector, but not nearly as good as an as a normal druid. So I'd say they're a C. Looks like the mystery of the druids wins out again. Mm -hmm. Now, next is the two subtypes of um f of fighter. The first one being the Knight. Yes. Yeah. Not the best way to describe it is take take the fighter Take all of take all of the all of the sort all of the um, iron guardian powers, so all of the sword and board powers and features. That's your that's the knight. Meant to be simpler, um, and in and in, instead of instead of using exploits, you just get you get a bunch of ut of utility powers and sta and stances that modify your basic attacks. With a def it... with a defender aura that used to mark foes. Spoiler but... alert! This is going to be a common thing with uh, essentials marshals. Monk, have I have I ever have I ever detailed that I really hate the excuse of simplicity as a way to be lazy? Because like, I swear that you and I have talked about that so many times on here before. That that simplicity is not bad. But when you use the excuse of we're making things simpler and you're just lazy and create shit because of it, it's not simplicity's fault at that point. It's your fucking laziness. Yeah, they're, um, they don't, they don't get, they don't get, at the start, they get two stances, which are, which are minor actions, and, which are um, minor actions that grant passives and power strike. Which is, yeah, basically power attack, and a lot of the other stuff is either improved power strike or, yeah. uh, or other features or utility powers. This is stupid. Which, this is uh, which, stupid. Yeah, knights... Knights are a D. <laughs> Simply because I don't of how one trick pony they are. I don't like it. I don't like it. You motherfuckers. I don't like it. You make this a class that's good at, 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 at I don't know, get, get, make it the one mounted class. Give it a proficiency in some fucking sort of lances and shit. Or, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Knight really just, Knight just really should not be a type of class. This is not a this is not a power fantasy. This is a fucking powered nightmare. The thing is, it's it's really good at heroic tier, but once you get once you get into paragon onward, it falls hard. It's the return of it is the return of linear warriors, quadratic wizards. Hey, would you do is such this a thing? The problem with ninety nine percent of essentials classes, they're good in heroic, but. Fucking fall straight off a cliff. Later on, this is disgusting. This is, this is, this is disgusting. Stop! Stop doing this, mm -hmm. knights. You should not be trying to emulate the the high bound fuckheads in the SCA who say all knights are at, at least must know sword and board to even get their knighthood. No, fuck you. I hated those guys when I was sixteen and beat them at their own fucking game. I hate guys like that now. Eat shit. When I made, when I did the review of Pendragon, I think the um I think the I think the knight character that I created in that um preferred using a spear versus a sword. Which makes makes sense because 
knights are meant to be like knights were not just oh i'm a minor noble that serves under a lord and and has better armor in it uh and has better privileges the idea of a knight was i am better martially trained in multiple different weapons to be an effective tool of battle include up to and including being a mounted combatant this is, this is fucking ridiculous. This is what that is. It's fucking ridiculous. I'm angry. I've, ah! I've made I've made it clear that um. There's there's nothing inherently wrong with with sword and with sword and board as a build, but it is boring as shit. And um, truth be told, I prefer I prefer sword and poke. There's a lot more well, options that you can do with that, especially with the reach. Poke also, and board as well works. Yeah. Oh, but but I've I've already I've I've already told you in in detail in personal in, in personal conversations that the S in the SCA to become a, to be knighted you must be recognized by a council of three knights within your kingdom and you have to be at a level of proficiency that they approve of in three different weapon martial styles but that most knights in the entire fucking SCA are so traditionalist, grognard, asshole, hidebound fuckheads that if you don't have proficiency in sword and board, they just won't approve you. Just tell you, no, you, no, you, you don't pass. You don't have, you don't have sword and shield. You don't have any and, and if you don't have any shield, like if you decide to go, let's like they'll they'll still approve people sometimes that'll go, like go mason shield or something like that. But if if you do all all weapon styles that are that are no shield at all. Uh, they won't even they 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 won't even let you consider for testing. If you haven't practiced any styles that use shields at all, they won't even they, they won't even see you to test. They won't proctor. And that whole that whole thing of focusing a whole lot on um, your your when it comes to, when it comes to. When it, comes, when it comes to the fighter and the slayer, the attitude that they had is, you get you get it you get a couple you get a couple stances, um, and you get and you get power strike as a in, as an encounter ability, which you, which you can use which you can use x amount of x amount of times, and everything after that is either cla is either passive class features, or ut or utilities which are not which are not going to involve direct combat. Mm -hmm. But they didn't do that with the knight. That's they did that with. They did that with the with the with the knight, and they did and they did that with the slayer. You know how I said that the knight is basically taking all the sword and board powers and and making a class out of that. Yeah. Although truth, although truth be told, if you did that with just the four e with just the four e um player's handbook powers you'd probably have a better class than the knight the slayer has that same vibe but instead of instead of sword and board it is um great weapons does it at least do better than the fucking knight or is it just as goddamn fucking bad it is no, i'm just it, angry it is just it is just as bad so it is also getting a d yeah fuck you fuck you essentials I didn't even play for e. This just upsets me. I don't fucking. I'm gonna stab whoever did this. Yeah. Um, don't worry. You can blame Mike Merles for it. I know. So Not even joking. That's it's basically his, it was basically his brainchild. Oh, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Mike Merles doesn't doesn't like the doesn't like the fact that I've um I've I've made pu I've made public about the fact that. If he was in a room with actual game designers, he'd be whistling "Stranger in Paradise." He was. <laughs> he's been the, as far as I've known him, he's been the third wheel. Because let's be honest, Mar although he although he likes to say he contributed a lot to fourth edition, he didn't. Heinso did. And James Wyatt, and the other guys. Mm -hmm. I'm just this the. Slaying. I'm no. I'm I'm done venting. I'm <laughs> done ranting. Yeah. I'm hey, done. Hey, Zan, Zan, stop. Zan. Stop. We have to move on. No. Stop. No, Zan, you need to you you need to check in the tabletop chat right now. 
about to post something you need to check. Okay, well, continue on, Monk. I swear it's going to be worth your time. Continue on, Monk. So, I swear it's worth your time. Next, we have um, Black Guards. Because apparently we really needed it. The idea with them is that they are is that they're a par- they're a variant paladin who draws power from their vices. Which I guess is a better formation for having a black guard. Still um But they're not but fortunately black guards aren't alignment restricted. So you can still have a you can still have somewhat of a of a black guard as a as a as a heroic character. But the 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 main the main vices that the main vices that you could pick that you could pick from is either domination or fury. Um one of the, one of them is very much a one of them is very much a controller, the other one is very much a striker. Um here, so so, either wrath or a very fucked up form of lust. Got it. Yeah. And they d- now they do get they do get ven- vengeance strike as an as an at will, which does more damage based on how many enemies are adjacent to you. But you're. Ch- Instead of, but your choice of vice is going to determine your other at will. Um, and a lot, a lot of their, a lot of their utility powers, honestly, are um, are dailies. With some, they do they, they do gain some encounter powers, so it's they're not. A, I would say that they're not as shit as the pal- as the essentials fighter classes we talked about. But the highest I can give them is a C. Not as shit doesn't mean they're not shit. Mm-hmm. It's just saying that they're, you know, a solid shit that doesn't make you feel like shit after you've shit it, unlike the uh, rancid diarrhea we just bypassed. Yeah. Now that's the first... Blackguards thing. also have the um, kind of interesting distinction of having, like, the Paladin's HP and healing surges on a striker. Which is something. The big, the it's big, not much, but the it's big problem something. is once again that pit, once again that um pigeonholing. Yep. Oh. Which is what all the essentials apparently have, and makes me very angry. Now, do you? But do you see why? It basically, do you, do you yeah. See why I say that um that essentials was kind of laying the groundwork for some of our problems with fifth. <laughs> yes. And apparently, level up five E took some some pages out of uh, the progression of of cool stuff to essentials level stuff. Although they did it in less time. Um, apparently, they were speed running. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> next is the Cavalier, which does have its roots in old in old school gaming, um, and. <sighs> The Cavalier was a, was a paladin kit that appeared in the early days of Dragon, like way back in the way back in the eight. It first appeared in Dragon number seventy two, and then in Unearthed Arcana back in eighty five, which I still have that book, and then again in Dragon one forty eight. Um, it was basic. It was basically Gygax's Mary Sue Paladin, which is why it got so much hate. Um. Because first off, you already have the lawful stupid shit. Then, then you have the fact that it that it is forced to charge enemies. So you have lawful stupid and Leroy Jenkins in one package. Let me guess the third the third um the third strike is the fact that it's charging on foot. Some um. Something like something like that. The other one, the other one was a f- was a fighter variant that just had more fighting skills from from the from the saddle, um. And then th- and that version would reincarnate in third edition as a prestige class for s- in sword and fist, um. But 
the but truth be t but the cavalier as a in the in the fourth edition obviously is a is a variant of as a variant of paladin is basically a sim is a simplified paladin it is set in its ways of getting a of getting a defender's aura and ho and ho holy smite and righteous radiance which is a opportunity attack righteous shield which is a in which is an interrupt that lets you take damage for an enemy and gives and gives you an attack bonus valiant strike which is an at will that's kind of that's kind of like vengeance strike but much like the black guard the only real choice you get is the virtue that you select sacrifice lets you lets you use second wind to heal allies and valor just gives you a better healing surge and a, an initiative bonus and, uh, Oh. So, so it's called Cavalier mm -hmm. and has nothing to do with mounted combat. Don't you just love using random ass names that you just think sound cool? Both well, I mean the word Cavalier is de is developed from the word Chevalier, and the word Chevalier is French for fucking knight. Good night. And they're both defenders in this game. <laughs> well, because of the fact that it's a, it's largely got all the same problems that the Black Guard does of being very set in a in a in this one specific type of paladin that it wants to be, I think Cavalier is a C. I, I, I. Mm. So. One last thing from most people I've talked to are generally in agreement that the Cavalier, when you use the uh, unreleased hybrid form of it, is better than a hybrid Paladin. To be quite honest, I never used the hybrid classes because I thought they were kind of pointless. They kind of are. You are. You unless you like. Have a unless you like. It's for those people who want who want to multi-class in a more traditional manner, but I I per I personally find that there's a far more that the multi-class feat system is far more elegant. See, I like the multi-class feats too, but my problem with them is that you have to like it's a pretty big feat tax if you want more than just like one power from the class. And that's the that's the. Uh... That's the sacrifice you're choosing to make. That's the trade-off. Yeah. Now, you know how you know how now when it comes to the ranger, that got split into the scout and the hunter. The scout is try is trying to be a simplified version of the two-weapon ranger. And it it um it does get and can ha kind of has kind of has the the a bit of the similar issue in the fact that it has. It relies on. It relies on stances, basic attacks, and power strikes. And because of that, I find the scout to be a D. Yeah, it does get wilderness knacks, but the the wilderness knacks are basically skill feats, <laughs> which we covered in some of the stuff about level up five E. The exploration next just being feats by another name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, and with the, when it comes to a lot of the utility powers that they get, most of them come off as dailies. I just at this point, all essentials is doing is pissing me off, monk. Um. We'll keep. We'll get ready because it's only just begun. No, it hasn't. We only have nine, ten classes left. Now, yes, but you're just gonna get more mad. The other half is the hunter, who's ba who basically who basically is doing doing the same thing that we saw with the scout, but with the archery part. It is the worst class in Pori. Um, from a pure optimizing perspective, yeah. it does it does get it does get free expertise feats it does use it does use the same stances as scouts um you all you all and and um 
You also get Disruptive Shot, which is decent. Uh, but the, but you have no you have no daily you have no daily powers. And truth truth be told, if I if I had an F, I'd probably give it to Hunter. But I'm gonna be honest, Hunter gets a D. Like on pa on paper, it should be it should be better than the Seeker. In practice, it isn't. In practice, it blows monkey nuts. So, next is the thief. Basic, basically the basically the um. Oh, and I I I have, I um. I should I should also I should note that when it comes to the rogue, one of the more infamous powers with the with the rogue was bloody path i.e. i.e. you dash across the battlefield and make people hit themselves <laughs> that was in that was infamously scubby <laughs> but a little bit of scub is good every now and then but the the essential the essentials thief Basically, basically focused on the on the skill monkey part of the part of the rogue. Um, sneak attack still existed, but it wasn't as quite as good. Um, and it'll and you could you could use dex to hit and and damage while also adding a bonus for rogue weapons. Um, oh. So I'd I'd say it it certainly fits its particular fantasy, but I can't put it higher than a C. Because it's outclassed by its by its older brother, the rogue. By a much. lot. <laughs> so yeah, there's like literally no reason to play a thief. So like, go ahead. I I I'd basically like to point out that. This points out how you can take a class that was so obviously S that it, that we might as well have created a double S or even triple S rank for it, and uh, and by breaking it down into a simpler class in the wrong way, you you neuter it to the point that it's shite. Mm -hmm. Now, Don't next, do next is the Elementalist, which appeared in Heroes of the Elemental Chaos. And was essentially was essentially the um, essentially the sorcerer, and they they had elemental magic, no daily or encounter, and had and had a bunch of meta magic enhanced at wills using their elemental escalation ability. You pick one specific element and run with it, gaining a set of abilities depending on whether you favor earth, fire, air, or water. No heart. Um, yeah, we already covered Captain Planet earlier. Yeah, um, a lot of people, a lot of people, were, a lot of people made Avatar comparisons. Those comparisons fall kind of weak because the actual Bender classes in the 4E Avatar project were better and fit the four roles. Um, <laughs> Earthbender was a, Earthbender was a defender. Um, Air Airbender was a controller. Waterbender was a leader, and Firebender was a striker. Yep, that makes sense. But your choice of elemental specialty grants you grants you two at grants you two at wills, as well as your version of the elemental escalation encounter power, and you'll look. You'll a you'll end you'll end up get you'll end up getting you'll end up getting you'll end up getting mostly utilities after that. You there, although at twelfth level you get elemental form, <laughs> and an, and another version of elemental escalation at at seventeenth. But truth be but truth be told, 
if there's one pattern to notice, it's le it's maybe it's just me, but it feels like they only they only built a lot of the essentials classes for the first ten levels. That's what it sounds like. That they're good and heroic and nowhere happened. else. I think if I think if the elementalist could could utilize multiple elements in some way, this might have this might have been elevated to a C. As it is, it's a D. I could have swore there was I could have swore there was a way for it to get uh some of the at wills from the other elements, but I know I know you didn't get to use the features, which is probably what you want. <clears throat> when the sorcerer proper can throw can throw in a bunch of elements simultaneously, and the elementalist has to pick one of the of the big four. Hell, even even the elementalist in fucking Guild Wars Two could utilize four different elements as stances. Yeah, but Guild Wars Two is an actually good game, so I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're not you're not you're not making a comparison between this and Essentials, like. Base sorcerer, base sorcerer in base 4e is fantastic because apparently 4e is a very good game. Again, I never got to play it, but Essentials is is the writing on the wall for how shit everything becomes, especially in 5e. Now, this is the next one that we have is one of the weirder entries into <laughs> into um into the classes that Essentials did. We have, and this is one of those things that I've gone back and forth on for years. We have a vampire class. Vampires are a race <laughs> template, not oh. a class. Oh god, no, not the vampire. The only time vampires are a class is if you're playing World of Darkness, and even then it's not a class, it's still a race. Not only that, but they're a they were the other class that used the shadow power source. Oh Jesus Christ. And they're also a striker. Oh Jesus Christ. Um Apparently apparently all of the All, all of the shadow players, classes are strikers. For some fuck all reason. Because you strike from the shadows. Apparent apparently I blame the, rules. The explanation that was given was that they wanted players to feel like they were playing the classical vampire with a lot of the powers based on that kind of lore. The whole turning into bats, the mist, the wolves, drinking blood, and, all, yeah, and but all that. The vampire's most famous powers that were used most often were never used in combat. They were all the charm powers. If anything, a vampire would be a controller. Fucking Christ. And you know what's the really when it's the biggest fucking insult to the vampire class? Not only do we have Vriloka, which is like a race of vampires, but we also have Vampiric Heritage, which is a feat a humanoid can take. Mm -hmm. So you can just you could literally just double down on triple down on vampirism, and then you fucking suck because vampire is a fucking horrible class. Or. Uh, Even better, why not just take why did I what the question that I always had is why not just copy paste what you did with revenants? If you pick revenant uh, as Because you know that would be good game design and Merles is allergic to that. Monk, I think you're gonna have to point at the sign soon. <laughs> I will never stop hating Merles. Get in line. But, but uh but Monk for my benefit, I don't even have to say for the audience's benefit here. For my benefit, since I don't understand what the vampire class even fucking does, all that I know is that it sucks. What the fuck does a vampire class do? Okay. Uh, I mean, dies in the sunlight. First <laughs> off, you ha you have you gain the following features: Child of the Night, which does what you'd think it would; Blood is Life, which is which is a way for you to get healing surges back. Enduring Soul, which gives you regeneration when you're bloodied, as unless unless you take unless you take radiation damage. Um, Hidden Might, where you where um you get where you can add. Your ah, I knew vampires were weak, were weak to nuclear weaponry. Um, vampiric reflexes, which which um grants you a, grants you a bonus to AC when you're wearing cloth armor or no armor and you're not wielding a shield. You get th you get three at will attack powers: dark beckoning, taste of life, and vampire slam. 
the Blood Drinker Encounter Power, the Swarm of Shadows Daily Power. Um, you get Feral Assault at 3rd level. You get Strength of Blood at 4th. A whole... Yeah, no... At the very least, there. At the very least, there. Um, they do gain a few. They do gain a few attack, um, powers uh, as they level, and it is tr it is trying to go with the classical thing, classical setup with vampires. But they tend they tend to fall. You tend to fall into one of two bloodline archetypes, beguilers or stalkers. So either you are, uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Or you are the black and white Nosferatu movie. Got it. Oh, hey Zan. Yes. Remember when uh, Mildred was mentioning uh, your way to regain healing surges? Would you the, like to know the, why that is? Because you're drinking the blood from things. No, because vampires natively only have two healing surges. That. Uh, that, 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 is that is that bad? Two healing surges Most, per day. Okay, I don't know how and that. Usually, you have other... you us, you usually have six plus your cons uh, modifier surges oh. per day. Oh, okay, yeah, never mind. That's bad. Um, so they tried to make you like a classical vampire and then hamstrung you because they knew that you being a, ca a classical vampire would make you too goddamn strong. The funny thing is, the idea the idea of a vampire class to go to go with that motif is not it is I could I could <coughs> squint I could squint my eyes and, and go and go with it to an extent, or e or even just or even just have even just have vampirism as a type of warlock patron. Actually, that would probably be a better idea. Um, the big problem, though, is that is that this was done in the Essentials era, i.e., you're not going to have a whole lot of choice. Because, say for instance, this vampire class was done using the f design framework of Core Fourth Edition. In mm -hmm. that regard, you could have the option to do something ki something kind of like the vampiric clans, where you could where you could have sets of powers that re that are more reflective of those cl of those clans or of those bloodlines. Um, Warhammer Fantasy See, does the same thing with the vampire with the vampire counts. So, so essentially, you could you could do it like how Old World of Darkness did it with their vampire clans. Yeah, if it were made in base forty. Yeah. But unfortunately, vampire was designed in essential, and essentials operates under the idea that the players are fucking babies and can't make choices. So That's... vamp. Vampire gets a D, if only if only because there were there were ways to make this work. I I can can I, I it go, it's the second class that goes in my own personal F because that's I've decided that F stands for flames, fire, fucking fury. Do do I need to go on with this alliteration? No. <laughs> okay, good. My F here stands for fuck off. So not as fun. Next is Binder, one of the two ver one of the two um warlock variants. They are an arcane controller as opposed to an arcane striker. Um they were try it was trying to mix the lore of the warlock with the lore of the 3rd edition Binder. Um which is weird because they still use packs as their subclass bases. They still, yeah, they still use patron subclasses, and unfor unfortunately, the the because this is essentials, this no matter no matter what your no matter what choice you you pick, your um you end up you end up going you end up going down more or less the same route. You only have th you ha but you have three options instead of two, like some of the other setups, either a gloom pact, a star pact, or a fey pact. And what that mainly is going, but even even with but even with that, that's all that really is going to is going to determine is um what is the powers that is the powers that you get. You uh you said oh, the wait, magic. No, no, no. 
in so, Heroes of Shadow, you got the Gloom Pact and the Star Pact, and then Fae introduced a... No, no Dragon introduced a Fae Pact later. Yeah. You said the magic word, Monk. I have, I have to recite it now. D6 for the Wargaming Kings on their Dark Plateaus. D10 for the Edgelords in their World of Darkness. D percentile for the Crazies with their Innsmouth Woes. D20 for the Wanderers with their Ciphered Crest. In the land of tabletop where the nerds all lie, one roll to rule them all, one roll to find them, one roll to bring them all, and on the game board, bind them. In the land of tabletop where the nerds all lie. <laughs> Damn it. Damn you, Zan. But... Oh, this is based off of off of uh, off of when we reviewed um, was it uh, dark? He gave me the play the driven into darkness the quick play yeah yeah but the when it comes to the when it comes to the binder I'd say first off it first off trying trying it ends up being. Despite what it want, despite trying to introduce the lore of the idea, the idea with the binder in third edition was that they made was that they made a bunch of different deals with different devils. Essentially, you can't. So really they're the lesser. They're the lesser key of Solomon. I guess. Um, and like the like being a binder in third edition was essentially having your body be a time machine. You'll be like. Hey, ancient dead spirit, inhabit my body and give me powers. And well, while that while that's certainly while that's certainly a concept that you can that you can work with, um, the fact of the matter is that they that it ends up being a poor man's warlock, and doesn't even fulfill the fantasy that it wants to. So for me personally, binder is a D. Uh huh. Now, I like the I, land I think of binders are top I think, where the nerds all lie. I, I think I think binders are kind of funny because instead of getting uh, Eldritch Blast, they get Shadow Claw. Which that brings us to the that brings us to the other entry, the Hexblade. Those who, those who want those who want those who were not satisfied with the tankiness of sword mages. I love Hexblades. I know or they're not. essentials and they're kind of me, but I just love. Or they just weren't, or the name Sword Mage wasn't edgy enough for them. The fucking Edge Lords. I'm a Hexblade, edgy, edgy, dark, dark. Don't yeah. you know Edge Lords need so much edge that it can physically cut you. Oh. Now, Hexblades are still arcane strikers, still based on charisma, but they focus more on close range, with one hand having an implement and the other hand having their packed blade. So they sh so, so what you're saying is, um, rituals so nice they shiv you twice. <laughs> oh. Now, all of their melee powers are based on charisma, which is also used for their ranged spells. So they don't have as much mad as one as one would think, and it kind of makes strength a dump stat. Um, Dexterity and Constitution are are good, are good secondaries, but they end up getting packed boon, packed reward, and packed weapon at the at the start. And which packed packed boon is a is a once per round utility. That works basically the way Pact Boon did with Core. Pact Reward is a da is a damage bonus based on your secondary ability score. Um, Pact Weapon is well, it's the it's the weapon that you can summon from your Pact, as long as you're holding an implement in the other hand, and lasts as long as long as you both will it and maintain your hold on both. It has its own proficiency bonus and damage die, but shares your implement's enhancement bonus. As well as any critical hit effects, properties, and powers. Um, so I, given given the stuff that it given the stuff that it gets, as well as things like packed aspect and packed curse, 
I think hex blades are a C. They are still fairly limited due to being due to being a um a su a sub a um essentials class, but I feel that they I feel that there's a lot more effort put into actually fulfilling the fantasy of the class compared to say the binder. It's still I would it's, definitely agree. It is nowhere near as good is nowhere near as good of a um uh as a sort of as a sword mage, which we put as B. And actually if somebody wanted to do the Gish thing, I'd recommend they go with Sword Mage instead. Um then we get to the wizard and that had Oh, you wanna hear something funny about the hex blade before we leave? Go ahead. For some unholy reason, presumably Merly Pearly, uh hex blades get a power that is like Eldritch Blast, but is not Eldritch Blast. It's called Eldritch Bolt. It's identical to Eldritch Blast, but it's not Eldritch Blast, so you can't use any of the amazing feats to buff it. Now, the last classes that we have are all wizard variants. There are a, to there are Ooh, a total boy. of four of them. The first one is the Blade Singer. Why the Blade Singer was deemed necessary is beyond me. Because somebody wanted to have their cake and eat it too, Monk. You know what the answer is. <sighs> yeah. Now. I feel bad for the Blade Singers. Apparent, apparently, it's because some people didn't think the. The sword mage wasn't a true conversion of the blade of the old blade singer. This was this was not, this was in the Neverwinter campaign setting book that was made as a tie-in to well the Neverwinter MMO, um, which in extension is also a tie-in to well the Forgotten Realms. Mm -hmm. So, Blade sing blade singers are are essentially are essentially a gish that rely on intelligence and dexterity. Oh, mad! Hooray! Um, mainly That's mainly inte great. mainly intelligence for the, for their for their setup. Although, for what for whatever re for whatever reason, most of their sp mo even though even though they're supposed to be gishes, most of their spells are ranged. Hmm. Also, let's talk about how most of their spells are their daily powers, but they select them from a wizard's encounter powers. That's a thing. Yeah. It shouldn't be a thing, but that's a thing. And you do get to you do get the option to treat to treat um blades as as spell casting implements um and it essentially it essentially it says that it counts as a wand but ne but it's never clarified what that means i'd assume that it that it functions as per wand of accuracy but again it's never stated you do get or well, you know like wand expertise yeah so uh so I, this is where I, I shill heavens and heresies again. Um, if you want a better gish than this stupid shitty blade singer, or even the the okay sword mage, um, play an inquisitor in heavens and heresies because it actually is really fun, and it can use its weapon as a spell focus. And when it uses its weapon as a spell focus, there's additional cool shit that happens. So yeah. Personally, cool. I'd put the I'd put the Blade Singer at a D, and oh, we now have we now have enough um, Ds. Oh, we have two. You rows. forgot to mention the Blade Singer's major thing. The blade it sings. It sings off key because it's clashing metal against other things, and that doesn't make a good tune. Not unless you're <laughs> no, doing it. No, it has one of those singing swords from the old Looney Tunes cartoons. Woo! But no, Blade Song was basically a um, buff that uh, the Blade Singer could apply to itself. Made it a good class for about two turns, but then it went back to sucking. Yeah, and true. 
for something that's supposed to be a more pure get more pure um gish more pure blade singer um in my experience nobody took the blade singer they would just they would just as soon if they wanted to fulfill the gish archetype they would rather pick hexblade than blade singer even though hexblade is also shit hex at the very least it, at the very least hexblade it's blade is less shit yeah um <laughs> yeah. uh, now next is the mage, which was the which was the first um was the fir was the first ascent was the first essentials class for the wizard. Um, and you know how you know how the fifth edition wizard has that whole thing of when when you pick your subclass you're expected to pick one school of magic and stick to that. Yes. It's kind of like that with when it comes to when it comes to the when it comes to the mage. It was there. It was there for people who wanted the return of the specialist wizard. Uh, choose, a, so... choose a school of magic and gain and gain class features based on that school. Um, also, so... infuriatingly, the mage is essentially an AEDU class because the wizard always has to have the best tools. Um. I would like to point out a book series that some people should probably read that's, that, that has Mage in the title. And it's called... The Gunpowder Mage? No, it's called The Last Herald Mage by Mercedes Lackey. Tell me that a mage is specialized when you learn what a fucking herald mage is, you fucking shit. Suck my dick. No, better yet, keep your mouths away. They're probably dirty and infested. Yeah, the weird thing the weird thing is, um because it you do have you do have the return of mages getting all the interesting stuff because unlike the unlike the other class unlike a lot of the other essentials classes that get that that get a couple that get a couple powers at the end and then a bunch of ut and then a bunch of utilities that are gonna be situational at best. The mage get the mage gets gets the gets the kind of spread you would normally see in a core class. They get they get two at wills. They get two encounters. They get two dailies. Then they get that um two util two utilities. And and say at level three they're gonna get two encou encounters. So it's not far removed from the this this is the one that feels. The way that I, the way that I see it, because of the fact that there's options available, I can't put it as a D because it's not as pigeonholy. But the highest that I'm gonna put it is I actually a know a lot of people in uh in the 4E community who swear uh, by the mage. They're like, yeah, you know, we 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 we. Sorry, people. I know a lot of people who are like, yeah, we prefer the mage to the uh, base 4E wizard. Mostly because of the schools of magic benefits are kind of typically stronger than the implement features a normal wizard gives. Yeah. So next is the Shire, which um. So oh, wait, where did we put mage? Just at C. Yeah. Okay. Now next is the Shire, which for some re which for some reason is a is a wizard variant, not a warlock variant, which you think would make more sense. Fuck is a Shair. A Shair. Uh, basically, is... a wizard who um, it's a it's a magic person who gets their magic from a genie servant. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, that that would just be a warlock. Now they Why get a, a they warlock? they get a from they get a familiar for free. Um, they get they they get damage reduction to to certain to certain elements. But for all intents and purposes, they're wi they're wizards with their wizards with a different coat of paint. The honestly, honestly, the big problem the big problem that I have with with them is the fact that for is that they um aside from the fact that they get that they get a significant amount of variety what when it comes to what they when it comes to what they can do. They are for they they play way too similar to wizards. 
So I wanted to put them in as a C because 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 of because I have a, I have a fondness for Alquadim as a setting, but because of the fact that the genie setup doesn't really do a whole lot. Even the even the even the true twenty version of Al of Alquadim and all but name does more with the Shair concept. D, I can't I can't bring them up to a C. Okay. Because when when you think about the idea, the idea of them cult of them using genies to call energy from the elemental chaos, you should be doing a lot more than just the same stuff you do as a wizard. Yes. At the very least, they should have been they should have been under a different archetype. But the last one is the witch. <laughs> the witch. I'm listening. Not sure I want to anymore, but I'm listening. Oh. Now the now the witch cha the first off the first off witches start off with Algary being a util being a utility they get right out of the gate and getting arcane familiar alongside cantrips. The familiar is basically your spell book. Um you you do have cho you do have choices between one of two covens, the dark moon and the full moon. Um dark Sounds moon, to me like this is just sailor moon. I'd say I'd say it's more of are you a good witch or a bad witch from Wizard of Oz. And each coven locks you into a mediocre encounter power. The Thema thematically it's thematically it certainly fit it certainly fits the fantasy of you're either you're either you're either the fairy godmother or you're the wicked witch of the west fly so, my pretties fly but it has a lot of the same problems that the, the problem is that classes. it's a wizard class and not a warlock yeah you would th like the same problem with the Shair. you would th you but I'm willing to put it. I'm willing to put it at as as a C because, at the very least, it's making a better attempt at fulfilling the fantasy. Although other games have done it better. I just want to set everything that's on C tier and lower on fire. I'm just going to set it on fire. It's shite. Set it. Set it. Set it on fucking fire. You want to borrow my later Zan? No, I have plenty of fire here. Don't worry. We have the fl we don't need a lighter. We have the flammenwerfer. It verbs flammen. Wait, do we use fire or do we use fire power? Yes. Shit. <laughs> but overall overall, I'd say I'd say if I'd say if there's any if there's any lessons to this is that um essentials was a terrible idea. There are right and wrong ways to do simplicity. This was a wrong way. Yeah, when it came to the best classes, what they what they did, what I think the the best classes that we saw were ones that found way found different ways to fulfill their niche. It's very easy to it's very easy to fulfill a niche in one specific way, and those were the ones that were that were either that were um that were B, that were bees. The middle of the road ones were were certainly on that, or what? The A's were ones where that where they were very good at fulfilling their niche, but they were missing a little oomph. The B's were ones where they certainly fulfill their niche, but you do have but you do have to have a bit of an optimization mindset for some of them. It, yeah, it's, they and fulfill their a lot, niche. A lot of them were like a lot. A lot of the B tiers were they just kind of did their niche one way and. Weren't very uh, friendly to you uh, doing it other ways. Yeah, the, 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 what I remember of what, what I remember when I look at the bees is these guys do their niche and they do it very well, but they don't do it in various manners. Whereas A does it in various manners, but is missing that small bit of panache and pizzazz that you need for something even better. Mm -hmm. And then of course S ranks are like all the bells and whistles, all the things that make your butt tingle. All of it. Yeah. The C the C's were ones that either fulfilled their fantasy or ju or just uh, and or 
or were just compl or were just um outclassed by other classes. And the D's were ones they, they did the bare minimum. Yeah, and the D's were ones that barely fulfill their class fantasy and don't have a whole lot of variance. And one could one could argue why as far as why I have such a such a massive um hate boner for for the for the lack of variation among some among some of the classes the reason for that is ver is very simple people i believe want to customize they w oh yeah personalization's all Person the rage very very much so the f the fact the fact that um when it came to when it came to my runs with diablo 2 back in the day and with um, Grim Dawn or Path of Exile now, that I can go I can go into arguments for hours about optimizations or about custom builds, or even some of the crazy build options that we've that we've seen when it comes to the Souls games, like somebody trying to beat Dark Souls three using nothing but weapon arts. And they did it too. Yeah. Or hey, they they said, "Can you beat Dark Souls as an anime character?" <laughs> you can go look up that video if you'd like, people. Yep. But the fact of the matter is that people want to personalize, and as one could, and yes, the concept of feats was a mean was a means to do that. But when you when you're when you're when your attempt at personalization is just a different flavor text, but doing the same effect, that's not personalization. That's window dressing. It is paying lip service to the idea of customizing and personalizing your character. Mm -hmm. You're customizing? See, you're making choices. The choices don't mean anything. This doesn't mean anything. That's not personalization, you stupid fuck! If you really wanted that, if you really wanted that level of customization, you'd be, be you'd be better served um, playing a late buy playing game or a Bethesda game. Your choices really don't matter, and you still end up Stealth Archer. <laughs> Funny you say that. I'm actually playing through New Vegas right now. That's Not Obsidian. at the moment. But... That doesn't count. That's Obsidian. That doesn't count. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? <laughs> Your choices actually matter in New Vegas. Regardless, it's a bit off the weeds right now. Yeah. But that that is going that is going to do it for the, for this particular episode. Um, I'm not, it's not going to be anytime soon, but maybe down the line I'll do this again with the races, since the races in fourth edition do matter significantly. A while. We're gonna we're gonna practice four e racism. Wait, what? I can say, I can say this though. I will not do this with Paragon Paths or Epic Destinies. Too many moving parts and well, too many options. Period. That's have you seen the one d four chan page for Epic Destiny's Paragon Fab? Stop. No, no more. No more. Mm -hmm. no <laughs> but with with that said, um, coming the come tomorrow we ha is the ne is going to be the next episode of Valley of the Judged. Um, I do have a return interview that I'm going to be doing on Saturday, and on Sunday there is a bit of there is a bit of a twofer. One, I'm going to be part of a, I'm going to be part of a podcast attempt that a that Mad Monarch is doing that we're that we're calling the Adventures of Monk and Monarch. Um, fun, fun. I decided to come up with the name as I the name was my suggestion as a nod to the Adventures of Dwayne and Brando. Mm-hmm. And uh, later that night on Sunday, we will be we will be returning to the, to these haunt to these vaunted halls for the third part in the Exodus trilogy. And I, by the end of it, am probably going to piss off every class main in Final Fantasy XIV. Mm. Now, most of them will probably be laughing if I'm honest. <laughs> most of them will probably be laughing. The rest of them are scholar players. <laughs> uh, exactly.
exactly. <laughs> so, hey, scholars, how's it feel to be out high nude by high new? So, with all, with all that said, I would like to sincerely thank everyone who took the time to listen to this four-hour show. And we'll be back with something a little... I can't say saner, but something to something to our speed. Damn. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, and join the watch.